Hello, and welcome to The Kosh. I'm your host, Timber Smith, and The Kosh is a podcast that spotlights people who've had an association with The Kosh in the surrounding Fox Cities area. Kosh listeners, how are we doing this morning? I'm doing pretty fantastic. I want to get into some stuff, but I'm going to hold off. As a matter of fact, you know, I normally like to get into, give you, give you the context of the day, what's happening here. And I'm not going to do any of that because what I think is going to end up happening is we're going to end up going really hard with our guests. I'm super excited with being (laughs) uh, in the presence, sharing space, sharing energy with this particular guest. And we're going to, we're going to just jump into it because there's going to be lots to say throughout this episode. And I figure, you know, we're not going to waste a lot of time with that. So, you know, college listeners, you know, if, but there's one thing I got to do. And I think you already know what it is. I don't know how I continue to get all of these amazing, amazing guests that I get. This week is no different. This is going to be a fire episode. We're going to talk about some stuff. My guests kind of warned me that they talk about things kind of bluntly. And my response is, I'm not scared. Facts. Yeah. All right. I'm so here for, I'm here for it. So without further ado. This week's guest is Chris Larson. What's up, Chris? How are you doing, Timber? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm, I, like I said, when you asked, how long did it take me to reply to you? Like 30 <laughs> seconds? It was fast. I am email a lot, but I am, I am a fan of yours, as you know, and of the show in general. So I am very pleased to be here. Thank I you. I appreciate that so much. I particularly take a lot of pride when I know our really, um, some of our community members who are really engaged into the community and and have community connection and so many various facets, right? And you definitely do for multiple reasons, right? And we'll get into those. But that makes me so happy because people like you, I'm hoping you're hearing the the voices of your neighbors, of our greater community, the community that stretches outside of the Kosh. And understand where we're all coming from. It's a good starting point. And I know that, I mean, whether we talk to each other a lot or a little, it's going to be a lot more after this, I hope. But it's that, I mean, I like what you do because you want Oshkosh and the surrounding area to be a better place. Facts. That's what I care about. And it's different ways, different means. And we're going to have fun, hard conversations about some of what, what those things mean in the middle and how we get from point A to point B. But that's what counts the most, right? We're starting from the same spot. Yeah, uh, exactly. Because yep. I do understand and get the feeling you also want the best for this community yes very much so yes all right so first question um chris can you please share a little something about yourself and what's your connection to the kosh and the surrounding fox cities area sure i'll give you kind of the basic history that's how this starts typically a little basic yeah Yeah, basic or as in depth as you want to be well we'll see you can cut me off whatever you need to so i'm born born and raised in oshkosh i went to oshkosh north as did my wife i left here to go to college in eau claire love eau claire still to to the day uh never graduated went for I think I was there for seven or eight years and didn't get a degree. It's a long story, but we can come back to it, too. <laughs> uh, you have questions related to it to a degree. So from Eau Claire, I was at the time playing in a touring rock band, of all things. And we were playing a lot in Minneapolis, playing a lot in Chicago and a lot in Milwaukee. And Eau Claire got to be a big loop for those places. So we chose to live. <clears throat> we were looking at Milwaukee or Madison is where we moved from our college band area to, to be next. And we chose Madison. This was not like a, a dream job. I wasn't getting paid that much money to be in a band. So I got a day job, of course, right away. And that's restaurant stuff. As you know, that's what I do for a living now. We'll come back to some of that too. But that was just kind of where I settled down for a minute. I took a job as a server at a restaurant, applied after being there for six months to be the GM, which was a big risk and step, right? Facts. That was the first and only resume I ever written in my entire life was that for, for that job. So got the GM job. And then worked there at that company for about seven years and worked my way up through that. I was writing the budget anyway. So you get to a point in that kind of job where you know you're not getting paid anymore. And the next step is to open a restaurant. We looked at a few sites in Madison and just one here, which is where we wound up in Oshkosh, obviously, after all. the I tell this story fairly often. You can blame Eric Hoopman, who you know through the grapevine somewhere, right? From Yeah, he, he was a friend in high school. Whenever I'd come back from college or from Madison, he'd yell at me about, look, what you do if you're from a hometown that you like you go out and learn something in the world and you come back to where you grew up to practice it. And that's how you benefit your community. So that's why he, he gets a lot of credit for yelling at me enough to get me to come back here and open a restaurant because that was my trade. And that was 16 years ago. We opened that restaurant, which is a long time making me feel old already. 
about seven years into that, I think, we looked around and there wasn't any kind of downtown grocery store. There was no place for people to shop. Right. So my wife's background is in grocery and we can get into that too. So similar, I worked in restaurants forever. She worked in grocery stores forever and she was, was and is really good at it. So we put her skills to use, found the spot where we are and opened Wagner Market nine years ago now. It's it been nine years? Nine years. Love Wagner Market. It's a fun thing. It really is. Oh, it's, you know, <clears throat> it's the brats. <laughs> it's the brats. I'm not going to lie. It's the And brats. it's the beer and it's the cheese and it's the wine. I mean, it's like it's grocery store is not a stretch because it is what it is. And we proudly serve the 18,000 people who live in, in the central city because it is their walkable grocery store and people treat it that way. Correct. But it's brats, right? I mean, it just it's it's a specialty grocery. We don't have yes. vitamins. We don't have saran wrap. We have good food and only good food. Correct. Which is fun. I mean, it's a riot for me. We explain it as like, well, you go to a typical grocery store, you've got 10 different choices of things that are like Doritos. Right. We've got the best of whatever that is. And that's all, they, all we have. We have one option because we only got space for one thing. Right. And but it, it's pretty yeah. fantastic. It's been really cool. It's been so fun to see how well received it is. And I can't take much credit. That's, well... To back up a step, Chef Mike, who I don't know if you know or not, but you should know Mike, who's our business partner in both places. Okay. He and I were at that same restaurant in Madison together when I was 26 years old. So he and I have been working together running restaurants for 23 years. Wow. Which is crazy. Okay. But he is now at Wagner with Sarah primarily. And my job there is I, I take the pictures, I write the copy, I do the plumbing, I build the merchandising, and they, the restaurant people don't work in the sales side of grocery because I need you out of there fast if you're in there shopping. Right. So they kick me out if I have to work there. Okay. But yeah. it's, a, it's been a really fun store. And it's just so cool to see how much people love it. Everywhere we go, people love it. All right. And then swinging back around to Beckett's. Yeah. That, to me, was just such a great use of that space yep. and the utilization of the mall. Yeah, it's a... Go ahead. I mean, it's just fantastic. And I, you know... I'm picky about my 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 places that I like to go and and spend my free time and have a libation and yep. that. But the one thing I can always say about when I go to Beckett's, I don't care when it is or how it is. It's just smooth. It's cool. It's friendly. It's just nice. Like I and I'll be perfectly honest. Like one of my biggest things is like I don't feel I can go into a lot of establishments here. Like when my fraternity brothers come into town and there's four, five, six. So then you're going to have four, four or five or six black men sitting together yep. in this place. And then I can't tell you how many places I've been in and people, they all of a sudden it's, it's a thing. Yep. Even though it's not a thing. I know. I get it. But it becomes a thing, right? And Beckett's is one of those spaces that I take my fraternity brothers when they come into town. And guess what is not? A thing. I appreciate it. Never a thing. Right. It actually feels like it's just supposed to feel right Um, so that was i can give you a little bit of background insight on that to a degree and it doesn't have to do with what you're describing necessarily but your point is extremely well taken the space is cool we'll go to the easy one first but that was long and narrow as everybody knows and it sat there empty for we think like 25 years because nobody bothered to think about it i got my dad who's an architect out of retirement to come do that with us so we had an architect who's my father do the interior design which was great and we got to work together as father and son but the two goals were restaurant stuff to start with. So we don't do perceived value. We do actual value. I don't charge you more than for something than you think it should be. That, but that's budgeting stuff. Number two was we wanted you to, when you walk in that door, we want you to forget about where you were a second ago. A, because it's a parking lot. And it's not the prettiest place in the world to walk in from. <laughs> but you get my point. I mean, you Facts. walk in there and it feels good and it feels special. It does. My favorite trait, and we can dig into some more of this later with restaurants in general, because I care a lot about restaurants, as you're going to hear. We call them capital R restaurants in my world, which is different than smaller stuff. This is full service restaurants. We call it with a capital R. I think the best ones are places where anybody can walk in. And I don't mean race, sex, that necessarily. I mean, anybody can walk in and eat by themselves at the bar and feel comfortable. That is the mark that matters the most to me. Facts. Now, that applies to what you're saying, right? Because that applies universally. Yes. But it's hard to have a restaurant where you can walk in by yourself and sit down at the bar and have dinner and feel comfortable and welcome and good. And we a lot of people do that. And that is the biggest compliment I get without anybody saying things. Yours is bigger what you just explained a second ago. But when I see people come in there, sit down by themselves and eat at the bar by themselves and have a good time and interact with the staff, that is the biggest compliment I can get because we've done what we wanted to do. That's the thing. I've done it. Yep. 
I know, and I appreciate <laughs> it. My other favorite example is in Milwaukee. Have you been to Elsa's recently? No. Elsa's on the park is, I think, think my favorite restaurant in the state. I shouldn't say things like that on the record because people are going to back it up and talk to me about it. But it is that kind of thing. It's downtown Milwaukee and you walk in there and it's full of people who live in the neighborhood and full of people who are visiting for conventions. It's five piece suits and people in gym stuff at the bar. Right. Individually. That is to me the mark of a good restaurant. I've never thought about it. Well, I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. I've never thought about it, but oh my God. Yes. It's a that makes so much sense to me on so many levels yeah. as a person who used to have to travel and go and eat alone. Yep. What it also says to me is like what sets the tone, what sets the culture and establishment isn't just what the restaurateur does, right? It's your it's the people your it's your customers. It's it's zero what the restaurateur it's, does. Who, who, you, yeah. who come in there and yep. stuff they set culture and tone and they set culture and tone by how comfortable and how well they've been treated correct you have to start somewhere for sure it has right. to have a basis but that to me so it's a the concept of third space or third place you have church you right. have home and you have other ones be it coffee shop bookstore whatever it is we very consciously wanted to be that from the get-go right and i don't i mean we can we'd be here all day if you want to get into all the little bits of what makes restaurants interesting to me but to be able to be a part of an active community and be something that's valuable to the geographic place you are as a restaurant counts a lot. Right. And I don't, I don't think new restaurants succeed without that concept. And that was the same thing 16 years ago as it is today. I mean, we're going to see a lot more restaurants close post COVID as that just is a thing that's happening. But unless you're something viable to the viable, important and meaningful to the geographic space you take up which is your neighborhood or your community right it's not going to work anymore it's just not you can't have the it sounds so doomy and gloomy but the day and age of there being a great restaurant halfway to highway 41 on jackson street that has really good food and really good service you're not going to go there anymore because what are you going to look at jackson street it's just not it's not a thing right it, it, restaurants need to be more than they were 20 years ago they just do mm. and lucky for me i enjoyed that being part of community, as you know, that's how we get into the next steps of what else I do, right? Right. Well, I, I I really like that test of being able to eat alone. But once again, my true test is you know, and my lens is different. Yep. How how I how how I see the world and how the world treats me is different. Yep. So that's my test is when I when my fraternity brothers come in. And they're asking me because they're coming in, you know, yep. we went to UWO together, blah, blah, blah. They want to know, Timber, where you want to go? And they're trusting me. Not that they can't maneuver in any space because they can. Correct. They, they've either, some of them lived here and left, you know, and, or whatever the scenario is. Not that they can't maneuver in any space, but when we're together, we're there to spend time with each other <clears> and enjoy each other. So the last thing I want to do is put them in a space where they don't feel safe. That is the largest compliment anybody will pay to me this year, and I appreciate it very much. Thank okay. you. Okay. Let me just ask you, if you weren't doing these two businesses that you do do, what would you be doing? That one, you, you made me think. I My dad was an architect, like I said. I like design. I like art. He always told me, and he'll listen to this and tell me it wasn't true, but he did. He told me not to be an architect, so I'm not an architect. <laughs> <laughs> the, probably the reason is that he had his own firm here for a long time, and he saw that architecture in general was going to not be as a, as viable a job as it was in 1970, whatever it is, when he started. Because now it's design, build. Every builder has an architect. It's not the same job. But probably he also knew that I can't draw, and I'm not very visually artistic, and he, he steered me the right direction. <laughs> um, he, he did. It, it's uncool. Uh, I mean, my my sister is an art teacher by trade. My brother is an artist in a lot of respects. So everybody else in my family can do that thing. I just can't do it. I'm really bad at it. Uh, it's not good. Are uh, you a stick figure man? Yeah, very much so. <laughs> it is. It's not good. It's really bad. Hey. And then my other answer was attorney, and I probably would have done that. The I just told you a minute ago. I never graduated from college. To make that story short, I was a double music performance major, and I didn't like some of the requirements, so I fell in love with philosophy and started doing a lot of philosophy classes and finished a degree in philosophy and a minor in English, but that does not constitute a liberal arts degree in the state school, so you can't get a degree with those two things together, right. so I never finished. But if you love philosophy, your next step is 
law is usually becoming a lawyer. Yeah. yeah. No, that's yep. a lot of people don't understand that. Oh, it's a thing. They, they, I mean, in my emphasis, the, the part I like so much about philosophy was logic. So I did a lot of logic classes where it's A and B in the sign and it's, ma- it's mathematically proving true and false. You're, you're going to see that dictates a lot of how I think about stuff and how I operate still to the day. It also makes for good customer service because it, it typically makes for pretty good conversation because you want to hear what people are saying without letting on much of what you think, but I'm going to give you everything I think today. <laughs> I appreciate that. But it for me, that means there, there are a lot of issues that come up that have less gray area than other people might think there are. I like, I like there to be right and wrong. I like there to be answers to things because that's what I was taught and what I fell in love with. Mm. But I would have been a bad lawyer because I can't shut up. So uh, that's part of the problem too. I do gray. <laughs> Yeah, you I do, do I, this is why it's gonna be a good conversation yeah i do great middle ground is tough for me it just is i don't like to compromise i find that you if you truly want to move things forward sometimes depending on the scenario oh yeah you do got a middle ground at some you gotta there's there's negotiation points but that's just my experiences oh, I, i'm with you and it so as you know, I'm currently running for city council. We can get a, get into some of that as no, well. Let's this, just get into okay. it right now. Fine. And yeah. This is, to clarify, this is not me here campaigning. I'm here because I love you. Yeah. So I, seriously, and I, I expect I fully expect you will call me out if the, I didn't bring a soapbox today. I'm not going to stand no, up. No. Or anything. Uh, no. It, what I, what we what I do want to do though is you are campaigning yeah. and it matters to the Kosh listeners. It does, and that's. And, but again, that's not why I'm on your. I, I wanted to be on your podcast. Two years ago. This sad, is true. We, we've been trying to work this sad out. <laughs> that it takes me just being a, a, like vocal. And I'm just kidding. That's not why. <laughs> but to that point, there we're going to talk about, I mean, I'm writing a lot of stuff. I, I'm sort of creating a platform. I don't think, I, I am campaigning because that's the word for what's happening because I'm running for office. Yes. But I'm, you are not going to, you, if I do this, you can call me out. You can call me and tell me I did the thing I said I'm not going to do. I am not going to ask for your vote, Timber. I'm just not. That's not how I operate. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you the things that I think help us collectively, and I'm going to try and do so without any opinion in that whatsoever. I'm going to tell you the things that I think work because they're factual things. Okay. That makes my position not harder or easier, but that's where the middle ground discussion is very valuable, right? Yes. So Mike Ford and I talk about this all the time because he does. he's a very good politician. He's a very effective counselor, and I wish you weren't retiring because he I would like him to stay on city council for a long time because he's really good at what he does because he gets results his and my conversations are also often about the fact that I am overly idealistic and I don't let that drop very easily because I think ideals are important and I think merits are important and to a fault I will not find middle ground on some things because I want to see it be done correctly okay maybe it's too big ask maybe it's too heavy a thing I don't know well, we're going to find, we're gonna find out. It, well, it depends what the thing is. Some things need Correct. to be done correctly. Absolutely. You're right. Some things there is no middle ground on. Yep. And as much as we think there is, no. It's a, it's you. It would be like putting in the wrong thing into a building and, and risking the integrity of the structure. Like, sometimes you just got to do what's supposed to be done. Yes. You hear my, you hear my wheels turning. <laughs> did i press the button well no to, but to your analogy i mean like i said this can go on all day but i'm thinking back to building a restaurant we just talked about it right. if next time you're at the restaurant i'll show you this in person as well but it's a fun little behind the scenes fact so you've sat we just talked about sitting at the bar right the whole long hallway that you walk into beckett's when you walk in there right on that hallway i think there are 10 full-scale drawings of a human being of different heights and different overhangs of bar width and how close the wall underneath there is to your knees. Mm. So to that point, we spent months trying to figure out what that right ratio is. Because if you run to a bar where you try and eat dinner, then you can't sit down because you can't get to your plate at the bar because the, there's a wall in front of your knees and you yes. can't. Yeah. I wanted you to feel comfortable there. So we drew that forever and ever and ever. Um. I almost got thrown out of my own restaurant while we were building it one day because the lighting guy, there's that little private dining room in there, right? Right. Yes. In the back of that, there are the, there's this light fixture that hangs against the wall. This is a little globey thing with a square thing. So just, oh, this is this is the kind of garbage you're gonna have to cut me off on today because I will I will not stop. <laughs> but I remember this vividly because the, the lighting guy got right. so mad at me because we were there we were there during the build out, which is a bad idea because I'm 31 years old trying to build a restaurant with a bunch of people who know how to do it right. right. And they said, "How high should these things go?" And I first said, "Geez, I don't care. Just get it done. Just hang them up. We need to do this thing." And they said, "No, seriously, how high on the wall?" And I said. Go look up the golden ratio, measure that from the bottom, do the Aristotle thing with the shell and pick the 3.2 whatever meters it is. And they said, 
Okay, that doesn't make any sense. But to my point, maybe to me sometimes, and this is where I get in the weeds, every single teeny tiny detail of something might make it better and you might not even notice, right? Yeah. So with these same issues, that's where I think I think I tend to, tend to get in trouble. And we're going to find out to what degree it is helpful or not helpful. But the debate's always you see the forest or the trees, right? Correct. Often. Uh, yeah. I sometimes just think it won't matter if we even talk about that if all the trees are perfect. Then we won't have to decide. Oh, no. <laughs> no you see definitely what I'm gotta, Yeah, no, you got to decide. No, I don't know. Um, Forests or trees, but if every tree is perfect, you don't have to decide which one's more important. They're all perfect. So yeah. that's going to be a long day. Go ahead. Uh, okay. <laughs> but see, it's not about, to, to me, in that kind of scenario, it's it's more about the fact is you're deciding how in-depth we want to go. Correct. You know. And, and that's so, where I'm going, to, I'm going to have to learn these lessons at some point. Yeah. But that's why, yeah, you ask your council questions and I'll give you. Well, no, no. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to go into next is like, I find your approach to running fascinating. And I, and I actually had a conversation with my boss about you and told him like what you're doing as far as like, it's not going to be a yard signs nope. and, and other various things. And, and. I'm not going to tell you what he said. I do want to know. No, but that's offline conversation. <laughs> well, I, I might have the I might have the same answer because I have an analogy to relate. But go ahead. But it is just this is going to be fascinating, and I actually love the fact that you're going about this very non traditionally. I appreciate that, and to see how you know what what's really what really connects our voter. Yep, and what do they find important? that they choose their representative with and how does that connect? Right. And, 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 you know, and to be fair, you know, I think you, you are able to do this because you have a, you have a large amount of notoriety around your name because of businesses and such, you're busy in the community yep. and the activities you do. Not everybody could get away with that. Like, correct. That's the fascinating uh, part of this. That's right. I get, yeah. I want to talk about that with you in particular, because uh, keep going. And so that's it. Uh, yep. that, you know, I'm super curious to see how this turns out because your approach is something I've thought about in the past. Yep. And I do think when you're in the community doing the right things, do you really need to get inundated with all of this other stuff when people trust that you're going to do what's best for the community? Hopefully. Hopefully. And, and that's, yeah, and that's twofold. So I can take one step back from that. And I, we've talked about my being on council for a long time, not you and I, but it's been a thing. I am, I have always said up to this point that I am, I'm better out of the scenes. I'm, I'm better getting things accomplished with other organizations and other groups who want to see positive things happen because somebody has to be able to poke people with a stick and make the thing keep moving or it doesn't move. And that's the problem. So I'm at a point personally right this second where I don't see those, I don't see my effectiveness there what it used to be. And I don't think anybody's is because I think we're less productive than we've been in the last decade, probably. Mm. And that's very frustrating to me. So that's what influenced the choice to run at this point in time. The mechanics of what you're describing, I don't, I mean, that sort of describes that I don't want to be a politician. I'm not a politician. I don't want to be a counselor so I can be your counselor. I think there are important parts of that relationship between citizen and local elected official that aren't working the way they should. And all that should be is you should be able to tell me or your counselor what you think, and that should move whatever you're asking along. That is exactly how this is designed. It doesn't work that way, as you know, right? It doesn't, not very often. That, well, right now. Correct. But, but local government to me is different. It is. Because local government, like, you can't really ignore ignore those people because guess what? You're probably going to see them. Correct. And that, that's part of it. And, and also, I don't know. Well, that's the really, to me, that's the big thing. It's, it's local government. Like, at the state level or federal level, is totally different. It is. You know, local government is supposed to be nonpartisan also. Correct. So hopefully the hangups aren't there where other people might be standing the ground and they're busy posturing, <laughs> positioning for upward mobility, power, whatever it is. They local are, government, you're supposed to truly be serving your community. It is supposed to be a conduit from community to, in our case, the city manager, because that's the form of governance we have, which Correct. is great. And I think that's the right fit for our size community. But the, to your point of the mechanics of the campaign, I truly believe that nonpartisan is important for the reasons you just mentioned. Partisanship in local government just makes things difficult. I can promise you I'm getting emails every day about issues that do not relate 
two. I, I see you smiling because you know what people are emailing about. Because you, oh, yeah. you know what people where people's brains go when, anytime there's an election. Hey, you, but, you just yeah. got to remember, I work in this. I am aware. <laughs> there, are, there are things that don't apply, and that's okay. And that's where I think partisanship gets us, and that makes it less effective than it should be. The yard side thing for me is I don't think there should be a cost of entry to serving, serving your community. So I'm going to not take donations. I'm not going to solicit money. I'm not going to take the – And I, if you say you don't want endorsements, nobody will endorse you, so nobody's going to endorse me anyway. But I don't think you should have to fundraise – to serve your community. When I talk to people who I think they'd be great at this, I say, hey, you should run for council. The answer every time is, I can't afford that and I don't have time to ask people for money. That's not how this works, right? Or it shouldn't be. So that's kind of the perspective. I hear you sort of in your explaining that, and maybe this is what your boss said, because I say that, it's right on my website. And that is a privileged position to be in to some degree, right? So here's a question I had for you. You're right that that's something that maybe I can do and other people can't do. I don't think that I'm wrong in saying that there shouldn't, it shouldn't cost somebody money or shouldn't make you feel awkward to have to ask for donations <clears throat> to serve your community on, on council. I think that's correct. And I think lowering that bar so more people want to get involved is very important. So that's the way I'm going to do it because, I, again, like we started out this conversation, that's a big ideal and that counts for me because it's the right way to do it. But I got a whole heap of criticism last week from a guy who said, how dare you do that? That doesn't help anybody. So which one is it? And my response snarkily was, should I spend more money? I'm not going to answer that. Come on. No. I thought you'd answer all the questions. Uh, well, no, because this is your show. <laughs> well, but <laughs> This is about you answering questions. And what I want to say to that is, I think everybody runs how they want to run. And it's your campaign. And so you, think... get, to, you get to own it. And, yeah. you know, some of it is like, I think this is a great opportunity to be a disruptor to the way things have traditionally always been done because just because it's the way it's always been doesn't mean that's the way it should continue to be. Correct. And I like this as very much a community social experiment to see if we are capable of not being caught up in what you traditionally are used to as far as campaigning. Right. And Correct. the things that people it. expect to see and stuff like that. Yep. You know, do we truly look past that or is this just an exercise where it is what it is because we're used to it was what it was and we're just used to it. Right. So Fair. I'm yes, I'm curious to see what happens. I don't think there's a right and wrong right now um, until we're done with this experiment. And even then, it's not a right and a wrong, but it nope. at least gives us gives us another perspective of where we truly are as active participants in our community. Correct. And that's the biggest point. And it really is. It, we'll see if it's, yeah, right or wrong isn't to me whether I get elected or not. Right or wrong is to me whether I do this the way I think is the right way to do it. Yes. And again, I'm not, you said it's an exercise in something. The gentleman who didn't like what I was doing called it an exercise in vanity. And he's not necessarily incorrect, but it's still not about me. I get, I get why he would say that. And I can absolutely see how it looks like that. Well, I think money sometimes or the, the, the camp, let's say the part where you've got to fundraise to pay for certain things. I think a big part of that is kind of like, that's almost like the pretest. Sure. Right. Cause if no one's going to give you any money, you, I don't know if you really should be running in a sense. And that's not me personally. I think that's kind of what it. the, yep. what the litmus test is for that. But I still like this. And, and I've thought about this. Um, you should think about this. No, no. <laughs> well, what I will say is I've been asked, you yeah, know, I know people have approached me and said, Hey, Timber, have you ever thought about, and we I was you. like, yeah, nah, I'm good. <clears throat> I'm Fine. good. You know, I've had a hey, look, man, I was a wild boy back in the days and I don't want to <laughs> No, fair. <laughs> Let me just leave that alone. Right, go ahead. You know, I'm very cash. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> but, to be fair, I was, if I was to consider doing it, I would want to do it exactly, not exactly, but yeah, your approach. I appreciate that. I don't want to, I don't want to do it on a bunch of, I want to do it because people think I'm going to go in there and properly represent them. And they know that all of my intent is for the best of this community, for our city, for yep. Akash. Yeah, it has to be. And that, uh, again, I really appreciate that. And I understand where you're coming from. And I do understand it. If it sounds like I didn't understand 
the people who don't think what I'm doing is the right way to do it, that's fine. I'm, I just don't want to show you pictures of me out getting coffee. I go, I get coffee. I mean, is there's a broader point that you're making to a degree and where I might be wrong is I don't, I'm not here claiming to know everybody. I'm not here claiming that I have a, a name recognition because I don't know if I do or not. But I do think that by having hard conversations about difficult things that we need to talk about and typing them, because that's what I like to do. I mean, you have to read them. We're going to talk about it, but still. I think by having those conversations out loud, we benefit no matter what. And I fully intend the over, overly idealistic part of this whole thing is I fully intend to put into practice everything I'm saying. I'm, I'm a man of my word, and I will do everything I can to make those things happen. That I can believe. All right. I'm excited to the see ones. how it turns out. <laughs> Same. All right. So, okay, we're going to jump into the first segment. Okay, Shoot, that was just the opening. This is a lot. Hey, that was in a good way. I'm having fun. That was fantastic. Okay, so we're going to go to the first segment. And the first segment is called What in the World is Going On With? And that's where we start with the phrase, What in the World? And then you tell us what's on your mind. So, Chris, what's on your mind? Well, I give you an answer to this. And it's going to sound like we're just having the most negative conversation. We're not. But I said, What in the World is. Let me see how I wrote it to you. Hold on. I want, and I do want some of your input. I know you keep saying it's my show, but. I wonder sometimes if Oshkosh has a self-esteem issue. Mm. If, if we we find the, if we find the negative in things more than the positive, and I'm going to tell you some stories at the end of this that are very positive. And you know that I'm I might sound grumpy, but I am a positive guy. I do find the the good and stuff. But in having some of these tough conversations that we're having now, and you've dealt with this for a long time, people tend to find what's wrong with stuff before what's right with it here. Mm-hmm. A long time ago, I had this conversation with somebody and they said something very profound that I think about all the time on this subject. They said, look, this is a blue collar city. This was a lumber city. And that's in our blood. That's in our DNA to question stuff. Because from the very beginning of Oshkosh, not very beginning because there's indigenous stuff way before that. But right. from industrialized Oshkosh going forward and history is not my strong suit. So bear with me. Fair. But lumber barons and lumber workers is a huge discrepancy in class and dollars from the very get-go. Correct. And that's some of the nature of what happened here. That's some of what built this city, quite literally. You can see it. Yeah. So that was the, that was, I still, and I don't have much more to say about the subject, but that's always been profound to me that that might be in our, I mean, you can see how that gets passed on from gen, one generation to the next. We, we question everything because we do. You can't, I mean, you can't have a conversation about Life Fest without somebody saying, yeah, but the racetrack, they took that away. Yes. No offense. No, it, this place has some long memory. All it, endless. I mean, you, you can't say Menominee Park without somebody saying, "Yeah, but Sawdust Days." Yeah, they took that from you. Okay, this is fair. That's what I, I'm saying. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know how you overcome it either. Is the thing you keep having tough conversations, you keep working at it, but uh, you, you know what how? If it, I, what if it's in our literal blood, Timber? What if that's in our nature? That's fine, but you know how you <laughs> overcome it. You do other cool things. You do work, yes. Yeah, no, I mean, seriously, when things, when something comes and it's better than what it was, you don't hear about it anymore. Mm-hmm. We still hear about it some. But well, still, I mean, I know, because, get it. well, you know, old school Oshkosh, they're just, uh, first of all, they don't like nobody. Correct. You ever, you ever hear, a, you know, you ever hear those people that are like, I'm not a racist. I don't like anyone. Well, we've got a bunch of those folks walking around in this joint. That's for sure. It's true. And you know what? They don't like anyone. This is true. So <laughs> they also don't like, we talked about your neighborhood on my way in here. They don't like the east side all of a sudden. Have you noticed this one? Oh, what do you mean? First of all, there is no east side. We're north siders, apparently. You think you're a north sider? I think you're an east sider. No, I know we're east siders. Yeah, you're an east sider. Look, this isn't easy, but, no. I, you know, old school Oshkosh to me, there's only west side, north side. And then now I will say within recent times, more people now also say south side. Yes. And south side to me is something that only has started to become a term within the last decade. Oh, really? All to right. me. See, I think more than that. But anyway, keep all going. Right. So... You know, and wait, you're born and raised. Yep. So you you got something on Southside. me. I'm not born and raised, yeah. right? So um, I'm just I'm giving you an outsider's perspective who's oh, no, lived here a long it's time. For for real. But yeah, no, I totally think East Side is a thing. Um, Absolutely, is a thing. Yeah, and this is, this is this is its own culture over here. Yep. On the East Side, good good and bad. I just I don't think there's bad. Good. I just yes, think, I like, I'm and glad you know why that. I like it. It is 
definitely the most socioeconomically diverse region in Oshkosh, which means everybody lives over here together. Yep. And we live together, period. And it doesn't feel crazy. People got a lot of opinions about this side of town. Yep. Right? But this side also has some extreme wealth built into it. Yep. So I don't get it. I don't, I don't either. I don't understand it. It's just economically diverse. Mm-hmm. I have always loved this side of town. To me, it is this is true working class. Correct. And I judge it by people are too busy working minding they, to and they mind their own business. Fair. And I've always appreciated it. Like I would never move to another side of Oshkosh. As somebody who's been here long enough and I bought my house, you know, twenty plus years ago, right? There's a thing about being the first black homeowner in a neighborhood. I'm sure there is. People want to know things. Yeah. And they're nosy. And then they keep their eyes on you. There's a lot of Gladys's out here in the game. Right? I can only imagine. And what I want is I just want to be like everybody else. I just want to do my thing. Yep. Walk my dog. Yep. You know, walk up and down my block. And when I walk up and down the block, I don't see a bunch of eyes pulling their curtains back and looking to see, hey, what's Timber doing? Or what's that guy down there that lives at this address doing this? And, you know, and the one thing I can say consistently is from the minute I have owned this house over here, yep, never happened. Good. That's great, right? It's beyond great. Yeah. This is Oshkosh. Yeah. I think it's awesome. <laughs> I mean, trust me, it. That does not happen in other neighborhoods. You have lots of good stories today. That makes me happy too. Yeah, I mean well, that's I'm I'm in the same boat. We live downtown, but I live on the corner of Jefferson and Merritt, essentially, and Maine. So I'm, I'm in the middle of everything. And socioeconomic differences there are massive, also. Oh yeah, massive, massive. I, my the back of my parking lot is the the quote unquote worst neighborhood in the city, right? And that, but that's it's according great. to who? Well, exactly. <laughs> it's true. I know. And, you know, I've, I have found that at times people call the worst neighborhood the most diverse neighborhood. At times? And yeah, I was, yeah, I was being You're polite. You being very polite. I was being very <laughs> right. polite. But that's a consistency. So it doesn't actually have anything to do with what's happening in the neighborhood. It has a lot more to do with what is visually, what, it, what they feel is the aspect. That is absolutely part of it, sadly. Of fact, the neighborhood. Some of that goes back to at yeah. least the, to segue a little bit into, I mean, it's off subject, but to the conversation we were having before we started regarding, regarding jails and incarceration in general and people moving to community for that, that reason. This has been out of the news for a minute, and it's, it's not on your subject here, but for a long time, Jefferson Street got all the you-know-what in the world because that was the quote-unquote highest concentration of sex offenders in the city. And those folks all came here because the jail. Yeah, exactly. We're making no people can't see the faces we're making, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. you can imagine the faces we're both making. Oh yeah, we we can we can different we're, different we're, subject, same point, but you yes. see where I'm coming from. Facts, that, right? So yeah. facts. Yeah, we're gonna jump into that later. <laughs> I bet we are. <laughs> okay, let me go. Let me see here. What in the world is going on with my? What in the world is going on with is what in the world is going on with aggressive telemarketers. Seriously. Bruh. All right. So here's my story. Okay. You know, I got, I, I was in a magazine article, a really cool magazine I article. I got questions later. Okay. Yeah. That's just fair. Yeah. So I was in the Insight magazine article and I was pretty proud about it, uh, basically because they took this sweet picture and it's you don't really always good. get a good picture, right? And they called me a renaissance man. I was like, I'll take that. You know, that's fantastic. But here's what happened. All of a sudden, you know. I start getting these phone calls and the news and the phone call is like, we're new such and such. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like already in my job, like that happens. I get phone calls from news. People want to get quotes, statements, whatnot. Right. And so my whole thing is I'm trying to avoid those like the play. Cause there's no winning in that, in that game. And, but then I let them, you know, but I got to let them finish. And then as they're pitching this, they're trying to sell me a plaque of my article for like $300. Yep. And I'm like, what? Now, here's the thing. Okay. I didn't know that was a thing. And so I just politely say, I don't know. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'll pass. Why have I gotten two to three phone calls a day this whole week? Yep. All calling back aggressively. Yep. Asking about me in this plaque in this article. So now, you know, and I'm trying to be polite, right? Because they're calling them a work phone. Yep. I'll never know who these folks are. 
So I'm trying to be polite. But now I've gotten to the point that I'm just like, uh, I'm just going to politely pass, uh, pass, click. <laughs> right? <laughs> I wasn't trying to just click. on. Oh, no, I but, hear you. but I'm at the point now that, like, it's, and I'm just like, now, at what point does it not feel, if I'm a telemarketer or a business? That's a good question. Time is money. Yep. Dials make a difference. If this dial, and they're keeping records, someone's keeping track. Yep. If this dial continuously hangs up on you, why would you continue to call it? Because apparently you're not, that, that's not, that's not going to come up with a fruitful outcome. It's not all of a sudden I'm magically going to say, you know, I've slept on this. Mm -hmm. And now <laughs> I need I need that plaque. I, I need that $300 plaque. I, I slept on it. I yep. know I've told you no 42 times. But today, today, the the clouds parted and the sun shone, and I need that plaque. No. No, that's not going to happen. What if I can answer your question? Please. There's a question. I, what if I really can? What if this is just how the day worked out, and you've, you've got this question, and I can answer it? Bruh. So, A, that happens to everybody who owns a business. And gets any kind of recognition ever. So every, not that we get much, but the best of Winnebago County, the same people call me mm. forever. I mean, not forever, for a month. And then they stop. The Oshkosh Herald picks of whatever the heck, win one of those, which you will. I don't know if they have a podcast category, but they should. And you would win if there were one. Those same people will call. I have a story for you and why those people call you in the manner they do. I'm not going to name the person. And thankfully it was long enough ago at the restaurant where they don't work there anymore, but they, and they were a great employee. Same thing happens for, of all things, and some restaurant person will hear this and relate to this story. So not very many people relate to the story, but somebody will. Right. Point of sale register tape, little tapes that go in your receipt things. Right. Everybody has them. Every restaurant needs them. You always have to have them. You always have to have a bunch. I don't, the companies may not exist anymore, but for a long time they did. And you get this phone call going, hey, do you use size three point whatever, but why whatever thermal paper? And the person will go, yeah, we do. And they go like, do, do you have enough of it? And they go, well, yeah, we do. And they're like, well, are you interested in more of that? And they're like, yeah, we need some. And then the people would hang up the phone. And then three weeks later, you get an invoice and a case of paper. Because you agreed to buy it on the phone. Oh, you did? Well, by, by saying yes to whatever question they were asking you, literally. Oh. That's why they ask you in the manner. So they're just waiting oh. for you to say yes to the right question. And then they'll send you a plaque. Oh. I know. It's clever, isn't it? Now, maybe it's not that nefarious. But it absolutely was in the paper roll business, and we absolutely got paper roll we did not need. <laughs> and I had to pay for it because my employee agreed to buy it. Bruh. Uh, exactly. I'm, I'm feeling that. All right. Well, I wake up in the middle of the night going, wait, did I say yes to that plaque? Is it coming? <laughs> you, you, you just traumatized me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I told you I had an answer. If I end up with a $300 plaque, somebody, we boxing. I'll hang it at the restaurant. Will you? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Well, then Let's I'm going to hold you to that. Let's go. Because if I end up spending $300, it's got to get home I'll somewhere. I'll split it with you, and then we'll talk to, we'll, yeah, we'll take donations for this. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. On to the next segment this is the hard one i think oh go yeah ahead. go this ahead is, though this is the hard one this so the, the next segment is called 21 questions Man. and even though there is not 21 questions it might Feels induce like it. 21 answers well these are you know these are really good questions this is stuff where you know i don't know it really makes you think yep and um i think we all learn from each other and not only that, I think this is a connection point. Like, it is. So I know this is going to be hard. You heard my deep breaths. I mean, this is to, for your listener. This is, and not even so much this one. What's crazy about these questions that are coming up next is it's not these ones that you freak me out about. It's the next ones. It's the easy ones. Yes. So let me give you a little back. I, I'm not kidding. I thought a lot about this because we had that correspondence like Wednesday night, Thursday morning, right? About when right. I, you said, here's the script that, to a degree tell me more. And I said, Oh geez, I can't, no one will care what I say to a degree. So I have many thoughts. Isn't this crazy that I have many thoughts on this part of your programming, right? This is so okay. I, it is. I thought back to that first restaurant GM job I got ages ago. And it, I was looking through your list of people who've been here. Have you ever had restaurateur, a, a, just a guy who owns a restaurant on this show before? Uh, no, I think you're the first. Okay. So we might have broken brains to a degree with regards to questions like this. So when I took that GM job, I was 26, 
the GM who was moving to a different restaurant, I knew very well. Her name was Ronnie. She was a sweetheart. She was very good at what she did. And she gave me lots of advice. One piece that I will never forget with regards to my job, right, and the restaurant is, she said, Chris, whatever you do from this point forward, every word you say publicly is PR, whether you like it or not. And you can relate to some of this in your job, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you didn't answer some of my questions to a degree, because everything you say is PR. So I have this theory to a degree. Restaurant folks, it's not that I don't think people care what my favorite thing is or isn't, but I'm trained to not tell you because my job is to know what you like. This is customer service. I want to know what, what makes you happy. I've got a lot to say about subjects, but very few of them have my opinion in them. Now, to that point, I'm very glad you asked because the first ones, you're right, are hard questions. And the problem with everything you say being PR means I don't ask myself these questions. I don't think about these things personally. My wife and I both do the same kind of job. We both work 65 hours a week, and we don't go home and talk about what we're grateful for. But we should, correct? Yeah. So we've been messing it up for a minute, and thank you for asking. How was that for the longest disclaimer to the easiest questions you're going to No, the hardest questions you're going to ask all day. No, I love, it. I love the framing of it. and It's um, something. It, re- it really got me. But I, I promise you that people are wondering like, and just as a whole, as human to human, as someone who runs successful businesses that like, I get it. And like, we all want to, it's a connection thing. Like we all want to understand, like, does, do others think like, I think am I odd? Um, you know, I, I totally get it. And that's, it's to a fault for me. It really is. And that's the next time you have a restaurateur on who does what I do and not like, that's not a big mark, but Ask them those same questions, or when you meet one, ask them if they if they value. It's not about my value, my opinion. I, right. I think I'm pretty damn cool. I really do, as you know. I mean, <laughs> so it's not like it's Bruh. not a lack of ego thing because I have plenty of ego to go around. But I just choose to not share my opinions on a lot of stuff a lot of times because I've been trained to care about what you think and to not say much about what I think out loud. That's fair, but. You're not wrong, and they are good questions, and that will go into some more stuff we might talk about later. Like, I'm, advocacy is hard. Telling people what to do is hard. Yes. Putting your voice to good use is hard. Yes. And this is some of that. So go ahead with your super difficult questions, man. <laughs> Chris, what are you grateful for? I, <clears throat> and now it's going to sound like I wrote all these down. I really didn't. This has changed a lot for me in the last handful of years because if you asked me a decade ago I would, I would be very grateful that i got to do what i love to do for a living and it pays my bills I, I love restaurants as you can tell right right i am currently grateful that that worked and that we can provide a space that is better for the people who work there than their other job might be that makes me most proud right this second that we're a place that helps the people who work for me pay their bills meet other people do cool social stuff and that they enjoy coming to work that is what makes me most grateful right now what motivates you? Right now, that's about the same answer. It really is. I, I want so we're going to cover more of this in a minute too, but my employees come first to me. You come second when you're at the bar. So I'm motivated to do a good job at my job for the people who rely on me to do a good job at my job. I still show up at, at Beckett's because I'm, somebody would disagree with this when I get grumpy over there, but I'm typically beneficial to my team when I'm there. So I'm there to help them. What grounds you? My wife does. She's pretty awesome. And we, we do talk about, so it's a unique relationship in that we, we, do, we both own both businesses with Mike, as we mentioned, but they're separate. So we go home and we get to talk about two businesses that we're passionate about and we care a lot about and we know what they mean to people. So that's very grounding. And I'm, that should have been the grateful answer too, because I'm grateful that I have that and that I get to do those things. What does success look same like to you? Every question. I, get, I mean, being able to give back to my community is what success looks like to me and to be able to help other people in the place I love and to make this, I mean, we have no kids. So for years we joked that downtown Oshkosh was Sarah's and my baby. We want to make downtown Oshkosh better. So I'd like to leave it better. What irritates you? When people don't do things for fear of what might happen in the future, making excuses for theoreticals and not acting on what you think might be the right thing. What scares you? To the day failing at my job still scares me. Again, it's a it's a restaurateur thing. You're going to ask me about TV shows later, but I was thinking about The Bear. Have you watched The Bear? I have not. But I what I'll say you is I got through it. the first 15 minutes of the first episode. Okay. And? and well, no, I liked it. Yeah. I just couldn't. It was something happened and I okay. had to, you know. Go back to it. It's, it's a thing. And it is, 
you read, I mean, you heard some of the press about that yeah. when it came out. It won is, a lot of awards. It did. And it is legitimately triggering in a good way for people who work in restaurants because it is very realistic. And there are some parts in there that explain this concept really well. Every restaurateur you ever talk to, if you ask them that question, they honest answer, an, honest, answer honestly, the fear is always failure. The fear is every single day that no one comes to your restaurant. Sad as that might be, that is, that is the fear. What recharges your soul? Motorcycles, big time. We don't know. We didn't get here yet, but I like motorcycles a lot. Yet? Yeah. Oh, I've been no, collecting I motorcycles know. for a long time. To the next questions you're going to ask me, and again, I've been thinking about this a little bit since you asked, but I love to have conversations about things I like to do. I mean, motorcycles is one. Vintage Japanese motorcycles primarily is what I do. We talk about that for days. Hydroponic farming. We, and these are the things that I wind up talking with customers at work about, right? Because we this is where you find those touching points in a totally informal setting where people are enjoying their time. So if somebody comes in with a Honda jacket on, we're talking about motorcycles. Or if we're eating dinner and there's hydroponic greens on there that I grew, we're talking about who grew them. It was me. So those little things are big for me with regards to how these questions at, are asked because these aren't my opinions. Those are just things I can talk to you about. Okay. But yeah, I'm, I am wounded inside currently because of the temperature outside. Oh. seriously i mean i don't live far from where i work as you know and i three years ago was the first year i put more miles on two wheels than on four so i leave my house and take 15 miles to get to work because that helps a lot mm. it, it's huge I had, the motorcycle thing is cool like, it's something but i don't mess with them scooters it, scoot yeah well mm. yeah there's more to that i we can talk about like i said motorcycles we can talk about all day but okay. that, to answer your question it is like, and I'll send you, you asked to send links. I have an amazing video and some scientific stuff that I love to read about the physiological effects of riding a motorcycle and what that is. And there's a disconnection point that applies to me because my job is not stressful, but it's a lot of moving parts all the time. Right. Motorcycle requires you to use all of your th things, both hands, both feet, yeah. all your eyes and your ears, or you die. So to me, not having to do that, being able to do that is the best disconnection I have because I can't think about what happened at work or what's going to happen next because I have to think about the motorcycle. That so it's sense. deeply spiritual for me. How do you define love? Motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> that's so oh, good. I mean, but, I didn't even think about that. Um, that's a, that is a really hard question. And the, what comes to mind, I didn't think about that ahead of time, but... It's the not having to think about it to a degree, right? That's where I think my wife and I are most blessed, that we're, we're passionate about a lot of the same things, and we honestly have fun every day. That is love to me. So we, it's not that it's not work, and that's not a fair way to put it. It's not work. But to be in a relationship where we have common goals and we get to enjoy the life we built for ourselves counts a lot. For, so for me, that's what defines love. What is the most memorable lesson you've learned from parents, guardian, mentor? That's a good one. So I think a lot of what makes me, some of the things we're talking about today, and this gets personal, which is kind of what you want, right? So I have a business aspect of what I do, and I we have 110 employees. So it's not a small business anymore. These are big businesses to or medium size, but whatever you want to call it. So that's part of it. And I also care an awful lot about people in general and what makes their lives better. And that's part of it too. And that is not that mom and dad both, not that both didn't think about both those things, but my mom was a kindergarten teacher and a, a Lamaz teacher and taught preschool. My dad was an architect and a developer. Those are two pretty far ends of the spectrum as to what the socioeconomic, whatever, but not, it's not the right word for it. But I think I got very valuable lessons about both of the things that I care a lot about in my life from those two parents, which counts for a lot, right? Okay. You ready to jump into where to start? Sure. Swim? I'll do my best. All right, this is Zay. the part where I think it, uh, nobody cares, but I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> oh, people care. I know. I'm just kidding you. Yeah, yeah, people care. I'm kidding you. And I'll, you know what? After this episode, I'll explain one of my favorite. Yes. Uh, one, of, one of my, actually, I'll explain it right now. See, okay. You're good. So how I judge, you know, people will randomly come up to me and I never know. It comes out of nowhere. I'm somewhere and they're like, hey, are you Timber? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm Timber. And they're like, hey, I listened to the cash. And I'm like, hey, yep. awesome. And I always thank everybody because I'm always surprised that anybody's out there listening. So yep. Kosh listeners, I appreciate you. But one of my favorite ones is someone walked up to me and they were like, Hey, Timber, I, that episode, uh, it was with Zach Zabel, who's a veteran. Mm -hmm. 
right? And Zach, when we were doing word association for food, he talked about hot meal or hot dish. Yep. It was hot dish, yep. right? Now, I didn't know what hot dish was. I ain't never heard of hot dish. Did, did, what is hot dish, sure. right? So he I have an idea, but I'm going to hear it. Keep going. So he explains to me how, you know, he grew up up north, uh, financially challenged, and hot dish was basically kind of a casserole dish where whatever's in the fridge, you throw it in there, and it's hot dish. And he loved his mom's hot dish, nice. right? And we really went into this and talked about it. Yep. And it's a, it's a thing up north, mm-hmm. right? So this person walks up to me and goes, Timber, that episode, I don't remember his name, but I thought I was the only one on the planet who oh, sure. ate hot dish, yep. grew up with hot yep. dish, right? That happened to me multiple times. And what I've learned is it's these kind of connection points that actually stick with people. Yep. Like they it. may not remember the person, but they'll remember that story. They'll remember that topic. They'll remember hot dish. And it meant something to them, and they didn't feel alone. I get it. It made community mm-hmm. simply because. Hot dish. Hot dish. Yeah. So that's why it. It, it makes. I it, understood it. It connects. It, I que- that's why, I mean, I questioned you, and then I understood it right away. I get it. I don't have anywhere as near good as answer as hot dish, but still, go ahead. Well, that's okay, because, you know, <laughs> the, you will have something for it. What we call the first, the unifying word, the word that brings us all together, oh, the shit. word of happiness. All right. And that word is food. Yeah, fair. I, the, you just you built that up so far that I'm going to just dump, dump it right down right now. Uh, mine is ham. I'm, I like hamburgers. <laughs> Bruh. I, that's not dumping it down. But to, to expand on that for a second, I oftentimes get – asked at the restaurant if i'm the chef and i'm not the chef there is a chef he owns the restaurant he's very good at it this is embarrassing to say to a degree but it's not really because what i do i don't cook well i'm a very bad cook Thank, thankfully my wife is a very good cook and i own a restaurant i've worked in a restaurant my entire life so i employ cooks which is great but my focus in restaurants is front of house i like the science of getting you in your seat and making sure you have a good time but i cannot cook it's terrible but you like hamburgers i love hamburgers what's your favorite hamburger joint right now it's a shameless plug. Don't it, it, say it. Don't like, don't get it, it, shy it's, now. It's the collab. We we have a butcher shop and a grocery store and a restaurant. So we grind the Black Angus burgers at Wagner and we take them over there and we make them right. I mean, there are burgers in the rest. It's just it's a thing. Why do you feel some kind of way about that? Now I, I want one of those. Yeah, same. <laughs> but I'm as I'm I'm older than you. I think we're not going to get into age here. But I I am allowed. One hamburger and one order of french fries per week. So Mondays are my hamburger day. I'm going to challenge you on that older than me thing. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Find out. Yeah, okay. Well, no, I ain't got no shame. I just uh, I just had my 50th birthday I'm right, party. I'm right, I'm right behind you. I'm two years behind you. There you go. So wait, the rest of that food part, my employees give me a hard time all the time because I, I wind up eating at the restaurant most of the time. I've all got right. a, a day or so off and my wife and I eat at home, which is great. But I tend to eat what the customers are eating. So Mondays, yeah, I eat hamburgers. Wednesdays, I eat at home. Thursdays I eat appetizers because appetizer night, and I eat a bunch of appetizers. Friday I eat fish. Saturday I eat a steak. Yeah. Oh, it's, I mean it's 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 I, that's how, I mean it's not that I don't care about high quality food because I do, but I just get in these habits of things. It is what it is. So it's not a very exciting as the way you built it up is the one word. It's just not for me. Just kidding. Go ahead. Cocktail or beer? I'm um, wine. Believe Ooh, it or not. Okay. And I learned about a decade ago I am good for exactly one glass of red wine per day. If it's more than that, I am not as good the next day as I need to be, and it's not like I'm hungover or drinking too much, but I need sleep and I need speed. So I'm one for the last 10 years, I've had one glass of red wine per day. Mm. Not very exciting. Do you got a favorite? I'm a Pinot Noir fan. Okay. Shop local. I was going to kind of give you this for hidden gems too because it's a particular point of pride, and it's a downtown Oshkosh jam, and it's a... <laughs> Yeah, do you want to hold it? Yeah, hold it, because I'll, then I'll tell you the story for Hidden Gems. Is there something else you want to say for Shop Local? Uh, you didn't mention your sponsor, and that's probably my favorite Shop Local right now for this episode. Or did you mention your sponsor? The oh, no, I forgot Let's to mention go. my sponsor. Carl, I got to go back. Hey, Carl, me... I got you. Carl Lowenstein, I got you. Hey, Here you know go. what? I'm glad you called that out. Shop this, Local. Let's go. This episode of The Kosh is sponsored by Sturgeon Spirits I don't Craft have a button, Distillery, button, button, button. The Kosh's newest <laughs> 
tradition. And let me say what I call is the church. It's one of my happiest place here in the Kosh. And you know what? That is a shop local. Please go stop down there and have you one of those amazing craft cocktails. They are fantastic. Done by Todd and Tanya. And that could be local gem too, because they just it's beautiful in there, as you just mentioned. Yes. They're killing it. Yes. And every day is something new. Have you noticed this? Oh. They have something new every day. They have a new flavor of something Every day. Well, you know, hey, look, uh, you know, I don't want to really, I don't want to admit to everybody how much time I might be spending in there, but I be spending time in there. Did you get some of that chocolate for Christmas? Mm, if you don't think there's some chocolate in here, you didn't hear the episode where I said how the chocolate went over, like that melted the wife's heart. Do you know how hard that was to get? Like, oh yeah, I mean, it got crazy because we sold, oh, we, yeah. we couldn't get anywhere else. And, I bet you there were a hundred phone calls at the grocery store about how to get that because we sell their stuff quite proudly, obviously, and have from the get go because they're right. awesome. Right. But the chocolate was like it was crazy. Yeah. No. Crazy. Yeah. So you're lucky to have some. Do you still have some? Yeah. We still got some. Let's see, it. is that what's in there? Oh no, that is it. <laughs> hey, wait! I ain't gonna tell you what's in there. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But yes, yes. Seriously. You know what? I'm glad you reminded me because the cash is sponsored. By Sturgeon Spirits. Love them. Love them. Love them. Okay. Cool. Next one. Concert. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it's been a minute. I don't, I spend all day in a bar and restaurant, so I don't get out much, as, a, as they say. What's your favorite concert you've ever been to? Though? I was lucky enough to see, so my favorite band of all time is Neutral Milk Hotel. I don't expect you to know that it is. I'll send you a link. Okay. They are kind of the, it's indie rock lore. It's a very important, two records, only one of them was important. I didn't get to see them when they were, a band because they didn't last for very long, but they did a one reunion tour and I couldn't go. And then they thankfully did another one. So I got to see them at the Paps and that was, that's my favorite band. I got to see my favorite band play my favorite record in person. That's pretty awesome. Also, I think uh, it's not the last show I went to, but pretty close. So I'm, it takes a lot to get me to go to concert timber is what I'm saying. Cause it's crowds and it's hard and it's a lot of work. Mm. So that was a big one. I got to see Brian Wilson at PAC however many years ago that was doing Smile and Entirely, and Brian Wilson's great, and that record is incredible, and that was a transformative concert. It was great. Okay. Streaming. Currently is Breakpoint, Netflix, tennis documentary. I'm a tennis fan. I like tennis a lot, and that's a good one. Is it? Yes. Okay. Although we've got – you were talking about shows. You talk about shows some on this show. We have – a list of favorites. When we're at home, we get a couple of nights a week to watch whatever the favorites are. Well, break that down. What, what, what is Cur- Currently is Fargo. Okay. It's great. The new Fargo. The new Fargo. I'm, I'm caught up on Fargo. Okay. All the time. So we, we're sad Succession is over. I'm a huge Succession fan. If you watch Succession, it's great. I watched the first four episodes. I am truly... and then I And then I lost my Apple uh, oh, TV subscription. Shoot. I'm not going to tell you how I lost it, yeah, okay. <coughs> but yeah. I lost it. <laughs> that... That show's important to me. I'm excited for the new season of True Detective, which just started. Have you ever watched True Detective? No. The first season of True Detective is, I think, one of the best seasons of TV ever. It's, it's okay. great. We like Billions. That's Guilty Pleasure. It's a good one. I've heard that's, that's really a good. good. One. Yeah. Okay. Handmaid's Tale is my wife's favorite. I watched the serious, first season. Serious stuff. And I couldn't get... You know what? The first season was so heavy. It's a big bummer, all of it. Right, because I like I don't like when I'm in my enjoyment time, right? Because I work, you know. Yeah, I know. Extreme. Yep. When I when it's time for me to turn my mind off, I can't watch something like The Handmaid's Tale because it just makes my mind go further and harder. It's true. It's like a true story. At the time. Right. We shouldn't start with that, but it's like a true story. At the time. It, it does kind of feel a little. <laughs> it's nuts. It's a little. It's a thing. Mm, it's tough. There's, no, there's nothing worse than when TV, when TV turns into reality. <laughs> so, and you don't know when it's going to really, when that flip switches and it becomes, yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Only Murders in the Building. Have you seen this one yet? That's my, my wife. Oh my God. That's so good. Me and the wife. That's so like good. one of our faves. And that's what you want after a long day work, right? Yes. Those, those people are fun. Selena Gomez is still awesome. It's just fun. Well, it's personal to me because they're podcasters. <gasps> That's a good point. I didn't yeah, think about that. Bro. They, whoa, whoa, whoa. What was the one? Oh, I should have looked up what the name of it is. Shoot, Timber. It's another podcast show. Do you know what I'm talking oh, about yet? No. Boy, somebody's going to, I'll send you, I'll figure it out. And it's, we shouldn't even bother talking about I, it. But I love that. Essentially, there's, it's, the whole premise of the show is there is a murder and these people witness it. And then they convince the murderer to not kill them, but to release his identity through their podcast secretly. It's unbelievable. 
Somebody will know what it is. Oh, I need to know. It's like this needs to be live, so we can call in right now. If you know the answer, call in. Is that how this works? No, just kidding. You know what? I do. I used to have a phone number. Nobody called. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> That's why I got rid of it. All right, entrepreneurship. I'll just give you a quote. It's, it still applies to me to the day I think, because I've answered some of these questions about I me. Mean, what scares me is failing. Someone a long time ago described entrepreneurship to me as getting comfortable being uncomfortable. It's a thing. I do Not believe that. Serious. It's a thing. That is that is the people who are best at it are comfortable being uncomfortable. I feel like I need to start a business then. Let's go. Mm. Diversity. That's the toughest one. I mean, you mentioned it to a degree, and it's something that I sometimes don't feel as qualified to speak about as I should for lots of reasons. But you put it very succinctly early on, and in the quote I wrote down from your inside article too, you mentioned you, you describe it very well, very well. To me, that means seeing things and people you can relate to in your community. I so like that. It's not the best answer. No, but I'm not the most qualified to give you an answer on that question either. If you know, what I, I mean. think no, I think we all are because we're all diverse. That's and, true. And no, and I do mean that sincerely. Well, that no. is my whole point. My whole point of diversity is like. We're all diverse. Whether if you have a medical condition and you take medications, you are diverse Fair. because that puts you in a category. Yep. If you like to golf with a fishing pole that makes you diverse, you <laughs> know, right. the fact that you Fair love firm. Japanese motorcycles puts you in a category. Diversity is nothing but difference. Fair. So and everybody automatically goes to race it counts a lot it it but for good reason too but, i mean but race isn't where we should go first identity is where we should go first and there's lots of things that make up our identities i like it it's true i, I like it a lot it's, so, this is good so i mean and and i'm not trying to discount the importance oh, no, of no. race because race is important yeah but that's not diversity this is that's a wonderful way to state that and i'm that's the one that's going to wake me up in the middle of the night not because you're wrong you're very correct but i don't know that enough other people think about that in that manner do they no because it's been weaponized correct that's what I, and you you ex, you went exactly where i was going and that happens a lot oh yeah and it's sad it's very sad yep cuz even in the most homogenous groups mm -hmm. you do diversity every day if you talk about cancer survivors or yep. people with this or my family is dealing with this right now, grief, addiction, all of that still falls under difference. Yep. I should have brought a pen. That's, I mean, that's this is why I wanted to come here was because, hey, I like you and this is awesome to be invited. But the, that's a big takeaway for me, my friend. That's great. And so when that, people that means a lot, and when that, people run from it. Right. Run to it. Well, yeah, that's a because we're all living it. Yep, but you can apply that. Absolutely, you, you can. You can paint that. You can make that a thing. You can. You can put that into practice. Well, it is a thing. Well, I know, but but, but we're not all. No, you. It's the. It's all the way here most of the time. Weaponize mm -hmm. is the right term for it. But if we thought about it the way you just described, and we all acted in that manner, you sound overly idealistic now, not me. <laughs> Well, just saying. Maybe, may, uh, I don't think I, I just think it's that beautiful. I mean, it makes it's the it's one of the best things I've heard somebody say out loud for a very long time, and I'm not going to forget that. Awesome. Okay. You know what? I think what we're going to do is, uh, well, you know what? We're going to get one more segment okay. through before we take our small commercial break. Ooh, um, I could use a commercial break. If yeah. You know what I mean. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right. TMI, um, TMI. The last, well, before we go on break, the next segment is hidden, Kosh Hidden Gems. This is your opportunity to share a hidden gem. It could be something everybody knows about, but maybe they don't know a specific detail, or maybe it's something people don't know enough about. Yeah. What's your hidden gem? So this is a little bit of horn tooting and pridefulness in pridefulness in downtown Oshkosh, but my hidden gem is Winnebago Bicycle. Have you been there? Not I you know there. about it. That's good. Yeah. So I'll tell you more. Prideful for a lot of reasons. That's a building that I know a lot about. It's right next to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. That it's a it's a story. I'll get I'll tell you why it's a, a hidden gem for us, right? So it's an awesome bike shop. It's right in downtown. Local bike shops are very scarcely a thing anymore. And they're important, I think. Like 
desperately important. Facts. So probably they've been there 10 years. So 11 years ago, I was personally building a lot of bicycles. I like to buy old frames. I like to put new things on them. Make cool. It's like Legos for grown-ups. Build a bike. It's fun. So I was buying lots of bike parts. And I got to know this guy who worked at it. It'll be an unnamed other local bike shop because they're not here anymore. A kid who worked there. Ben, his name was. And he was awesome. So I got really into, as you can imagine, I never go all the way into something, right? Can you imagine? I, can you imagine I started zero and get, and get heavily invested right, in something right away and just do, yeah. So I got way into building bikes and got to know this gentleman, Ben, a whole bunch. And one day we just said, I just said, look, if there's no local bike store. When I grew up, there was Bike Land and there was Oshkosh Cyclery on Main Street. And it just got in my head that it was an absolute tragedy that there was no downtown Oshkosh bike store. And Wagner wasn't there yet. We had a different business in there that could spare some space. So we broke off some space. And I said, Ben, if we build you a bike shop, will you come own it? And he said, yeah, for sure, which is great. So I had a little bit of hand in it. My brother and I did most of the work and we built a bike shop. Ben will kill me if he hears this whole thing, but he maybe won't listen all the way. But he, eventually the plan was for him to come there and open a bike shop, eventually give plenty of notice to his job. He, he ultimately told his job what he was going to do. He was going to open a bike shop and they said, you are fired. Get out of here. Oh. So he called us and said, can we hurry up? And we said, yeah, we can get it done, whatever. So it was just the coolest thing that we happened to find the right guy in the right world at the right time to come downtown yes. and build something that was supposed to be there. The funny part to me is always I found out, like I knew Ben okay. He was my friend. He was my bike by, and he was about to be a tenant and a friend in the same building we are. But it turned out he was like 22 years old, which was great. <laughs> <laughs> it had every right to do it because he was as skilled as they could be in the whole world. Right. And now Winnebago Bicycle has been there for 10 years. He sold it to Sean, who runs it now, and Sean is passionate about it. And Pedro and Devin and all the kids who work there are amazing. And it is, it's, A, it's just a rad shop. And downtown bike shops are cool. Local bike shops are cool. Yes. But I'm personally proud about it because we helped there to be a downtown Oshkosh bike shop. And that counts a lot to me. No, that's, that's amazing. Actually, see, I don't know. I feel like I know Ben, but I don't think I know Ben. I might know Ben. If Ben has a sister, I might know Amber, his sister. Yep. Maybe. Maybe. They're great people, and he's doing something. Else. He's like, I forget what his job is now, but it's something. It's like skeet shooting robots that launch. <laughs> Seriously, it, it That's sounds fantastic. Like, it's amazing. But it, it worked out great, and I'm just I'm pleased that they're there, and I'm pleased that your city has a, a bike shop in its downtown. They all should. All right, facts. Well, okay. Now we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Did you know there are children in the Fox Valley in need of hearing aids, but their parents struggle to provide them because of lack of insurance or high copays? I am Juliette Sturkins, audiologist and board member of Here in the Fox Cities, and proud that this small local nonprofit organization has helped fund hearing aids for some 30 kids. Your donation would help more children hear Visit hereinthefoxcities.org to learn more and to see their smiles. Every child deserves to hear. Okay, gosh, listeners, as you know, and I, I try to share this whenever possible, if there's any nonprofits out there who are interested in having an ad here on the Kosh, it is free. Because you are a nonprofit and it is important to our community. So just reach out to us at askthekosh at gmail.com. Once again, askthekosh at gmail.com. And let's sit down and figure out what that might look like. Okay, Chris. Yo. You ready for the next segment? Sure. Okay, the next segment is called Story Time. This is my favorite segment on the cash building things these things up like i gotta i'm just kidding you well, yeah that's the point yes <laughs> yes it, I'm, I'm totally building them up it, but you know what you're living up to it oh I, that's nice of you to say we'll see <laughs> so i the one i thought of for this is every so often i get to go talk to the kids at communities at oshkosh north because that's it's a cool program i like it very much very much i like when they ask me they're like this time hint hint if you're listening communities folks i do like to come talk to y'all which is good but I like to relate the story of how I got from high school to where I am now. And that's not to import a bunch of importance on where I am now. But I like to tell them that story. Because you said, well, you, I, I have no kids. And I can only relate to this from the employees I have who are the, that 
age of having to decide what comes next. Right. And maybe you can relate to this, but because oh. you lived with it and I didn't. Well, I, not I see just it that, people, but, but, but I was an admissions counselor. <laughs> sure. I went and talked to the community class multiple so times. You can yeah. tell me if I'm right on this or not, but right. I, when I, I, I'm scared for people that age sometimes these days because it's different than when I was that age because I'm maybe the last generation where people said, you can do whatever you want to do in life. Go mm -hmm. do your thing. People, kids don't get told that anymore, right? Nowhere no. near. No. It is all stress all the time, and if you make a mistake, you're done for good, they think. Not, not that extreme. No, no, it is that extreme to an extent because yep. there's more to it. Uh, social media has changed the context of a lot of things. Correct. And, you know, there's a there's a video for everything. There's a there's yep. there's a record of things, and so no, that's on the mind of our youth yeah. quite a bit. And actually, it, it, it stresses me out. And again, I I employ people who are 15 to whatever they are, but I, I get to see that in them, and I think it'd be really hard to be a kid that age these days. So I sometimes not when I go there, I. It, probably the teachers don't like it when I point out that I didn't graduate from college and it's a different path in general, but it's, I think a valuable story to tell to those folks and people might want to hear it now. So I, like I said, went to school in Oshkosh North, went to college in Eau Claire, was a music guy, changed my major, got a different thing, but that's not how I got to where I am. My degree and choice or not degree doesn't make any difference to owning a restaurant or being successful or not. So I can point to the definitive moment in my life that, changed that trajectory and meant the most so in college i was working we didn't really cover it but i as restaurant people do i've worked in restaurants forever that's just what restaurant people do it wasn't what my parents did I just like working in restaurants so in college i worked at a coffee shop it was called racy delanes it's still there it's still awesome in eau claire um and i was in a pseudo managerial perspective but i was a college kid and i was kind of going to college we had a regular customer there named john who was still one of my best friends ever he's the coolest guy he sat at the coffee bar and spoke. So you could still smoke indoors at the time. Mm -hmm. He smoked cigarettes and read books all day. And then he'd go across the street where his wife owned a hair salon and he had an art studio in the basement and he made crazy modern art. Those were his jobs. And I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. Because, what I mean, imagine if your job was read books, smoke cigarettes, and make cool art. Mm -hmm. Pretty hip, right? That's hip. So one day John showed up and said, hey, my wife Nancy needs some help with her computer things. Do you know anything about computers? And I said, well, not, not really, but I'll gladly take a look, right? And... That was the moment when I said yes to his question, my customer at the bar. So I went over there, helped with the computer. It was a simple thing. We fixed it. And she said, we need somebody to help with payroll. Have you ever done payroll? And I said, well, no, but I will check it out. We can learn it. And I wound up doing some work there. And she said, well, you, you can, do you want to work here also and help manage the hair salon? And don't judge my hair. Timber, I see you looking at my hair. I was judging. And don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just said yes a bunch to these people that I love. So it was an easy thing to say yes to, but I wound up working for them for a minute, which was great. It was a cool place to work. It was a really, really busy place. They drew clients from Minneapolis. It was a, it was a cool, it was way before its time. It was art studio in the basement, like 14 chairs of hair salon, and then yoga studio upstairs. So it was a bustling, fun business to be involved in. While I was working there, I did the ordering for the salon. After all, I ordered their hair products and got to, this is where it gets a little convoluted, but I was working with a company in New York that was a new company making stuff, and we were buying a lot of their new stuff. And they had an educational program for salon professionals, which, again, I'm not, mind you. I just told you I'm a college kid running a thing. And ultimately, I went out there and got some training from them about how to sell their product, which is just what it was. It was helping them sell their product. But it was good education. It was a way in with these people. And there were people that I got to know, right, in New York selling stuff. So as I mentioned way earlier, the band I was playing at the time was deciding where to move. We chose Madison. I called in my last order to these folks in New York and said, hey, just so you know, I'm, I'm moving, so I'm not going to call you anymore. Somebody else will be set up to call you and make these orders. And they said, well, where are you moving? I said, we're moving to Madison. And they said, I've got a lady there who needs your help running her salon. And I said, okay. So I took that job also with the restaurant job as well. Um, so I was managing a hair salon, waiting tables at a restaurant. And then the GM job I mentioned earlier opened up, and I wrote my one resume ever in my entire life. But guess what I got to put on it? A salon manager here, a salon manager there, coffee shop manager there. And that's probably what got me the job that was way above my skill level at that point in time because I had managerial experience, right? Right. All because when my buddy John, who smoked cigarettes and read books at the bar, said, hey, can you help my wife with that thing? So my point to those kids in high school is that had nothing to do with my being music major, nothing to do with my playing in a band, not even really anything to do with my working in a restaurant for 30 years. 
It had to do with the right people that I said yes to and was able to, not able to, just willing to take a chance on something else fun and then being able to apply whatever you did last to whatever you're doing next. And that's kind of how I got from point A to point B. I love everything about that. It's a good story. It really is. Well, it's, it's how life works. It is. But imagine if we told 15-year-old kids that that's okay too, right? It's not that you don't hear that, but you don't hear that. Well, what I actually know, well, I think that's happening more. Good, it should. And, and what I mean by that is like, uh, you know, college has gotten the reputation of being hyper expensive. And yeah. So kids and kids worry about that. They don't want that debt per se saddle, particularly, I don't care who you are or how organized you are as a youth. Like no one knows what they want to do with the rest of their life. That used right? to be how it was planned, right? Especially you, yeah. at your teenage years yeah. when in high school, they start asking you that it was a freshman. And when you're a senior, you still don't know. You have a guess. People told us you ever, the average person changes their major 17 times or whatever it is. And that was true. It's still true. Uh, well, they do change a lot. Yeah. And I don't know if people could afford 17 well, times. Sure, but, <laughs> but you're right. But those kids don't hear that in advance anymore. Well, they told us that. I told people like, You'll figure it out. But if you really want to know, when I was in admissions, what I used to share the most with students, and I used to tell the parents too because they needed to hear it more than the students, mm -hmm. is that the things that you're probably leading your student for, like you don't know because the things that are available now or will be available weren't, exi weren't in existence when you were around. Sure when you were in school, when yep. you've been a professional, you've been sitting doing what you've been doing for the last 15, 20, 25, 30 years. And now you're trying to tell your kid what they should go and do. And you don't even know what's out there anymore. And the basics you're telling them, be a cop, be a teacher, be yep. an engineer, yep. be a doctor. And right. I told my daughter, and this is exactly what I told I was going to ask daughter. you this exact same question. So go ahead. Yeah. I told her like what, what you may decide to major in, may not have ex may not exist and i told her this back when she was in middle school it may yep. not exist now she ended up getting her degree in interactive web management Perfect. which is basically you know social media marketing web design things of that sort right yep. and analytics but it didn't exist when i was telling her about sure. it but we found it and so when the time came she was open to it smart and i didn't pigeonhole her Yep. To one of these old school careers. Smart. Because it's different. Mm -hmm. We are in a point where we are in evolution and we're changing faster than ever. Don't do that to your young people. You don't have the answer because you haven't looked for a job in ever. What a, what, they need an applause button over here. Oh, you, you need one? Need for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's go. just the real deal. And so I'm big on that. Like, leave it open. Let them go explore. Find out what's actually out there. You can't sell them the old stuff. Maybe no. some do want to do the old school stuff. I some mean, I'm not knocking that. Nope, they do. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just also saying, like, there's so many things that our adults, who adults were supposed to have the answers, right? Yep. We don't know. No. And I've, I've my best guess sometimes what I've told a few people who ask, and again, these are my employees, so it's it counts a lot because I care about them a lot. It's a little different, but... It sounds like a bummer, but some of this these days might be find a trade that you kind of like and then find an awesome hobby that you care about. I like that. It's, it's, it's real talk, right? Well, the I mean, trade, the trade's going to get you paid. That's what I'm saying. I, the, one of my favorite examples I have, I have when we've had, we've been really lucky at the restaurant to have people who work there for five, six, seven, eight, nine years. So I get to see them all the way through college and then get to see them get a degree and then try and get a job. The happiest one of those I've talked to did that hated the job they got in their field, now works at a prison, loves it, and plays a shit ton of, shoot ton of golf. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I mean, what, how do you define happy life when you're a 15-year-old kid? You don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. This one figured out that that's what he wants to do. I'm sorry I swore on the podcast. I told uh, you earlier I wasn't going to swear. Damn it. Well, you know. At we, least it took a minute before I said I swear. You did pretty good. Yeah. yeah well, you know. Maybe, hey, look, it doesn't matter. We're all good. It matters. Hey, well. Okay. That was fantastic. Appreciate it. Okay. So now it's time. It's time to really jump into the things. Let's okay. do that. Well, here we go. Yes. 
It never gets old. I, I, like I love that. it every single time. All right. It is time for the topic of the week. This is where our guest gets an opportunity to pick the topic of the week 99.9% of the time, which means almost every time. <laughs> And this week is no different. Chris, what do you have for us? I did throw that halfway back to you when we were talking about it before, and I will throw it halfway back to you again. So this is, again, not campaigning, but you've heard me lately talk about some things I care about deeply. Yes. We just had a conversation over the break about one that might count, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you choose so we can dig, because if we, we can't do them all. We no. really can't. No. So broad stroke in what I care about and why I care about these handful of things I'm going to let you choose from is... I think we need progress, and I think that progress begets more practice. Progress, I think, is practice. It's Alan Iverson. This is the thing. It's a funny meme, but (laughs) practicing doing stuff makes us better as a community if we do more of it, right? So Mm -hmm. I'm after little things, and I'm after big things, and I think the more things we do, the better. The topics that count the most to me personally, and again, these are not, they're whether I get elected or not, they're just things that I care about because I live here. Right. And I know you've read them to a degree, but housing is one. I've got lots of thoughts on housing. It's a hot topic in general. We don't yes. have enough. It is tied into every other thing in the whole wide world. So I will gladly Facts. dig into housing with you. Okay. I will gladly, we were talking about street assessments, which I have not typed 3,000 words about yet, but I'm fixing to. You're going to hear all about it. It's a topic I know and like, and it is also important for some of the same reasons because it hurts people's pocketbooks in neighborhoods where they need the money, which is good. And the least exciting probably is code and building and building codes and how we attract the right people to be here. A lot of that has to do with housing too. But I'm but not going to stigma li- there. Wait, but the, I'm not going to lie. That code one, oh, and good. I'll tell you why I like it, mm-hmm. is because Oshkosh has a reputation, big time, of it's hard here to get stuff done. It, it is, and, it, and and I'm just being honest that that is the reputation that now I don't I didn't know this prior to what I do now. Sure, right, but regionally, yeah, people decide to go to other municipalities and other places to do the things to start their business, to build or whatever, to do whatever because the and I don't know if this is factual, but this is definitely definitely the perception. Correct. And that's that so, it is hard to do things here. And the point I'm making with a lot of that is it doesn't matter if it's real or not. And it, by the way, spoiler, it's real. It's very real. But the perception is all that matters, because if it convinces you to not do what you love in your com- in your community, then we've all lost. And, I, and that's the problem. And then the other thing that I that I hear is, is that once you crack the code, though, then that just makes the people who do do the things do more things. Right, because then the code's cracked. Hopefully. I hear I hear both sides of that. All right. I hear of, and this is, are we going to choose it? Are we choosing that one? Uh, it's, it's wait, related. First, first of all, we can go down it's all related. of them, but we're, let's, let's go with this okay. because I think this code thing, like. It um, goes right into housing for a lot of reasons, and that's yes. where it's most important and most applicable right now. Yeah. I'll give you an analogy first. Whether it's real or not, you can decide. And this is, I You've learned that I don't really mind out of school. And a lot of that question is, is there retribution after you say something out loud about this? Maybe. It doesn't matter. But I'm not building anything new, so I'm not scared, I'm not scared to have the conversation right this second. My favorite example of this, when Beckett's opened, this is 2008, the sign still exists. When you look at the restaurant, there's black letters that say Beckett's on them. Behind them, you almost have it in this room, but you don't quite have it in this room. Behind them are LED lights. Mm-hmm. In 2008, that was a pretty new concept. But they were lights that were designed for that purpose. They went behind signs. They backlit the letters. I am personally anti-big gaudy signs in the central city. We have code that dictates that you shouldn't necessarily do that anyway. So this is a very pretty way for us to have signs because we needed signage because it's dark down there and there's a road and you got to know where you're going. Right. So it was a product designed just for that purpose, to backlight letters on a building in a sign setting. It had been used in every state in the country in 2008. The inspector here at the time was long gone. I'm not going to give you a name. It doesn't matter. The electrical inspector did not like that product for our project because there was something in the code here that said if you light a sign, it needs to be approved as one lighted unit. Not the intent of the product, doesn't matter. We we get the weeds on what it was or what what it wasn't, but the facts that matter are it was used everywhere. It was used in this case appropriately. It had all the right ratings, and they just wouldn't have it. So we got everything done at the restaurant. We got ready to open, and the day of our opening, we, we, we get fire inspection, you get health inspection, you get all those things done. We got all inspected and we were not approved. So this, if you can't tell why it's important to me, it's been in my craw for 
16 years. Facts. So we got everything done, and we did not receive our occupancy from the city of Ashkosh. They said, you can't open because that sign's not approved. And we said, get bent. We're opening, obviously. We put put this much time into the thing. We're opening now. We're opening today. And they said, don't. And we said, we are. We just did, right? And, of course, nothing happened. They They didn't come arrest us. They didn't take me to jail. Guess how long it took for us to get occupancy for that building? Guess how many years it took for us to get occupancy for that building? I was going to say two. Eight. <laughs> eight? We operated without occupancy for eight years. Now uh, we were, and again, there's no, no harm in that. We were inspected by everybody that was the safety side of it. Right. But we It was all over this sign. We didn't get signed off from the city for eight full years. Over this sign. Correct. Over LED lights. Correct. That were UL rated and had been used in every state in the country, but had not yet been used in Oshkosh. So that's how hard it is to get something new done here in 2008. That's bonkers. I'll tell you a similar story last week. I'm not going to tell it now because they're trying to open currently. But I, it, those kinds of things happen. And maybe we can talk about the difference between where you work and where you live. Maybe some things are like that elsewhere. And as you're learning, I can be a little set in my ways. And I don't back down very easily from things. So I probably didn't help that by just going, eh, no, forget you, no. And again, that's that gray, gray in between, make it work type of thing. Sometimes I just don't. I'm happy to take a stand. And it worked in the end. It didn't prove anything. Nothing got better. But that's nothing, an analogy for you. Yeah, nothing got better. No. It just, it's <clears throat> the story. And if you didn't read it, the story I tell and the thing you read is there was a development near us. Le- Recently, I got to know the guy building it who had never worked in the city before. And they built the thing. They got inspected. And I said, how'd it go? And he said, I hope to never come back here. That was as hard as anywhere I've ever worked. And he's been doing this for 30 years. Mm. That can't happen. No. No. That's terrible. Correct. That sets the tone. Yes. Of, and you know, we, here's my thing and why this is important. And I've had this conversation with other people. We've done, in Ash, in the Kosh, we've done a great job of saying, come visit. We've done a terrible job of saying, stay. Yep. Right? Yeah. We're, we're event city. We have all these events. There's amazing things that happen. You know, we go out of our way, you know, conventions, people come. They When people come, they enjoy it. Yep, we're, all the time. We, we, we're welcoming. We've got great amenities. We do this. But that should transfer for some into saying, I'm glad you visit. Yeah. And I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. We're also an awesome place for you to stay. Well, progress begetting progress is the start of that, right? Because what these things do, what's hard about all these issues is eventually going to get back to budgets and levies and what you can afford and what you can't afford. Right. I don't think, and this is again, not not making a pitch here, to exactly your point, we can no longer just focus on the getting things done of stuff. It has to be about the thing that's the hard perception to open stuff here. Because if we don't do that, we don't grow. And if we don't grow, we die. If you're not attracting people to move to your municipality right this second, Facts. in 2024, you're going nowhere. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to go, I mean, currently we're shrinking. Well, the, the, the bigger problem that I have with that is other municipalities around us are focused on This it. is why we're going to get to that street assessment piece in a minute. I'm going to blow your mind with a story. But anyway, as you're saying. No, I'm just, and I'm that's with, it. No, I know. That's, a, that's it. Like, the, you've got all these other municipalities within a rock's throw. Yep. And they're, they're putting effort into that because they understand the importance of it. Yeah, people think it's not competitive. It's competitive. It is competitive. Yep. I say that about school districts all the time. Yeah. Like, you, you. You know, we, we have people who gripe about that, and it's like, no, you can't have a challenged school district. Right. Right? You, we have to invest in that because other, when you're a private sector business, especially a big business, a yep. major business, the for, for them to recruit talent, your talent, if they're a family, a family building age, the first thing they want to know, first thing is the school district. Correct. And if we don't have them. Yep. You may be losing great employment tax base opportunity because we they're saying, well, you know, we need a place where our employees want to come, where we can get diverse talent. Correct. And when you say diverse talent, the, the bottom line is it diverse or not, people need what they need. They need yep. safety, they need affordability, but they need great schools. Yes. 
And I'm not going to say that that's easy. That's not easy. That's hard. That's hard. Ho- however, if we're not focused on those types of things, I'm gonna. I, I, it's quality of life stuff for me. That's what I call it. Mm-hmm. And I'll give you an, a great example, and then I will help you segue to another subject to make this easy. So we're going to. Aaron Shear, I already admit, is one of my favorite people in the world. You follow the thing with the water treatment plant. It's in your neighborhood, right? Mm-hmm. Right down here. Mm-hmm. We allegedly have to have a giant water treatment plant directly on our largest, bestest asset in our coolest park. Mm-hmm. I hear your breath. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, hey. I, I, I'm I, not saying nothing. I don't. Mm-hmm. You don't have to. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter because I can wrap it up pretty rapidly for you. So there are two schools of thoughts. You need clean water no matter what, right? Mm-hmm. That's everything that's on this paper. That's all the infrastructures. We got to have clean water. Facts. But if we don't make that better than it can be, Someone, and it doesn't even matter who, is going to show up here and see that we built the largest, ugliest building on our biggest asset and didn't put any single other thought into it other than we have to have clean water. And they're going to go, why would I want to live in that city? Because they obviously do not care about this. <laughs> that <laughs> cannot happen. It can't. Should we just hang it up? Should we just, are we done? Just roll the credits. We're out. No, no, no. Hey, look, I'm just going to say, you know. Bruh. It, it can't. Uh, yeah, still. So. To your housing and schools point, I will send you the link, and you have to check my math. Have you seen the single-family housing project in Sheboygan that's happening? No. Right down the road. So and I don't. I would have come more prepared with notes, but it's they're building something like 600 pretty affordable single-family homes in Sheboygan County okay. to attract people to move there. Right. Talent and yep. diverse talent because they're 200 to $240,000 single-family homes, and they're designed well, and they're what people need. That's not a bad price for what it is. The four largest employers there, which is like, it's Kohler, Aaron's, and I don't know who else is in that region. You might know. Uh, Kohler, Aaron's. I don't know. There's one. There's a couple more. But okay. It's a big project. It costs a bunch of money. The city's paying for some or the county. I don't know what it is. But the cool part about that project to me is the people who, the companies who are investing in it are saying, we need the talent to come here and they need a place to live. It's got to be a nice mm-hmm. place to live. We yeah. know that they need a place. Yes. They don't, there's no requirements that you work anywhere or that you work for those companies. Those people, and these are big companies, are invested enough in their community and they understand that problem enough to give, it's $10 million, I think, collectively that they're giving to this project just to get people to move there. Yeah. It, it, it's I not that hard, right? I can't stress the the importance of that. You know, there's other things that go into that. Yeah, child care, you know, there's other things. Like, you, you, don't, you don't even understand. When you can't provide those basic needs right. for talent, Someone else will. And correct. Don't sleep on it. Even though is the Fox Cities, you know, and I know people don't always consider the cash part of the Fox Cities, but the cash is something else we should talk about. We we we're Fox Cities. I know. But it is competitive. Like we work well together when we gotta work well together. You we do it better than most. Like we actually will partner with each other. We understand each other in part. But don't think that is not competitive municipality to municipality for them trying to gain leverage massively on all the on, time. on tax base mm-hmm. employers the whole nine right yep. and so like <clears throat> we can't put our head in the sand and be like well we're just gonna do it we don't want to do it and you know the status quo is easy though i mean it's easy to just keep doing change doing. is hard right but you know what change is guaranteed with whether you want it or not yep you just get to choose which direction you go You're right you can fight it yep but it's gonna happen yep facts yep so housing, see how, see how I went? See yeah, how no, I let's go. We know there's not enough, right? That's part of the problem in Oshkosh right this second. Because mm. we had a study that says there's just not enough and we need more. Okay. That presumes growth. And I'm not sure that we're doing enough to guarantee that we grow anyway. But all cities have housing issues, right? Right, right now, right? yes. Of, Hands down. Uh, affordable, uh, correct. particularly. Correct. There's the next word. I, yep. was, I wasn't sure if we have a true housing issue as much as we have an affordable housing issue. True. Probably a lack of, in general, also, I, I will believe the study that we need more, but affordable is the key. And I care a lot about that for a lot of reasons. Thanks. So the ones I'm getting at there are, this is where I think the Sheboygan, Sheboygan example is a good one because you can point to it. You understand what's happening. We're not going to be able to do that right this second. But there are code things that we can do to make that easier to attract the right developers if we have a better reputation for being able to build things in this city, right? See how these things go together? Yes. So we can do things like lessen setbacks from the road, allow more properties to build, be built on the same parcel, 
allow you to build a unit in the back and rent it to somebody. You could do that. Yes. Your ADUs are awesome, right? You can do that in Appleton. Cry, don't toot your own horn over there. Hey, 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 hey. now I live but, in the cosh. I'm just saying. I know, but these are easy things that we can and should do because every community is doing them. And if we're not doing them, we're not getting far enough ahead, right? So that to me is the easy part of it. The hard part of this conversation is perpetually going to be how we treat the people that want to live in those homes. And that's the thing I care a whole bunch about. I think mainly because of where I live and because I see people who need a place to live all the time Mm -hmm. because I employ people who have a hard time finding a place to live because they might have a felony, heaven forbid, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the part that really hurts me and that I also think we can change by changing the way people can get an apartment and what is allowed to be asked ahead of time. And the one that I lean on, if you need any proof that a campaign that I'm running isn't about me necessarily, I'm saying that I like rental inspections and tenant resource centers. And if you recall eight years ago or so, that was a bunch of people ran for council just to oppose rental inspection program. Mm. And I don't think that's great. And I'm partly selfish in that. I'm a landlord. I think a rental inspection program helps to level the prices charged in market because the things that should cost less then cost less. Things that cost the middle amount cost the middle amount. That lets people rent a cheap one and move up to the next more expensive one. Currently, what we have for pricing here is everybody charges as much as they possibly can all the time. Mm -hmm. That makes it hard for people who don't have as much money as the next guy Mm -hmm. to rent that apartment. Mm -hmm. Part of that is because those landlords are allowed to charge whatever they want. And allowed isn't the right word because, of course, they're allowed. It's a business, right? Mm -hmm. But there is no recourse and there is no resource for the people who might need it to get that housing. That hurts me. It's weird, right? Uh, It it should hurt everybody because ultimately... It makes the whole community worse when we don't have that. When people who when need you a place, don't have a, right, right, you just need a place. Correct. And right, you know, and mm. these people aren't necessarily looking for fancy. No. They're just looking for safe. Yep. And you know, and and I think we need more options. More more people who rent rooms, more people, more studios, Would more be great. Yes. That's what we need. Those are the 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 things that I see disappearing. Everybody's trying to take a property, not everybody, but no, a lot of people are yeah. taking property and they're trying to luxurize it. And I don't think that's a word, but I just made it. I more. liked it. I understood it. And and maximize profit all the time. And it's like, at some point, can we just get back to doing what's best for the community a little bit? Right. And probably your municip- municipality has to do some of that for you. And I'm okay with that. Well, see, but there's it's more than that. It's, it's not the municipality. It's also the county. It, well, absolutely. Because the county. We're coming it, back to that. Right, because the county has, look, I, if I am correct, I, I believe our counties regionally around here had some funds that they put out there to do some affordable housing things. Yep. I don't know if people took that up. Nope. But it can be incentivized all kinds of different ways. Right. That, well, the fact that it was out there and there was incentive, incentive it, uh, I'm not even going to make that word up, but there, it was there. Right. And we need to focus on all that. Some of that is code changes. Some of it is attracting the right developers to do the right thing in the right place. Yes. My simple, I mean, none of it's simple. In my perfect world, the way that gets done is a little bit of help. There are some beautiful programs that we can point to, and I can send you, I'll try and send you links to these, but cities all over, bigger cities are saying, you have to build X amount of this type of thing or you get nothing. Right. We're not there yet because we're not there yet. Yeah. But what I think we should be saying is, hey, please come build something. Here's how easy we're going to make it for you. Yes. And when you do that, 7% of it is marketer below or 16% of it is marketer below. Yes. Because I don't want, there shouldn't be a stigma to any of it. It should be easy for the people who want a place to rent to rent a place. Mm-hmm. And the best way to do that is to put everybody in the same spot, right? To make it all the things. Yeah. We can do that. We just yeah. have to want to do it. There's a project I'm a... Uh... I don't want to say I'm part of because I'm not. That would part, be, I'm that's sure an you're over. Part. That's an over. If you're thinking about it, you're a part of it though. That's an overstatement, but that is one of the negotiations that was put in there, like that. You know, whatever developer we want to work with for this development to occur, that you know, a certain percentage of this needs to be affordable. Affordable rentals at said price, yep. at percentage this, and it was like, yeah. Right. Yeah, we you you can do that because the developer's not going to lose loot. Correct. The margins are, it, it, mathematically it comes out so similar and everybody benefits and the whatever would be the difference for the developer there are ways to incentivize that on the front end. It's not it's not I'm not going to say it's not that hard. I'm just saying. 
Well, okay. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm going to roll into the next thing okay, real go. quick because go you ahead. said you wanted to go into assessments. You have you have experience thereof, and I haven't said much about it publicly yet. And it is probably, if there's a hot topic in this election cycle, and that's not a thing we do here. It's not an election cycle. It's just an election. But if there's something people want to talk about the most is street assessments in Oshkosh because we're currently council is talking about changing the way we do that as yeah. you know correct no you no. don't know no well, then I'm, gonna fill, I'm gonna fill you in yeah fill me in okay have you your road here is beautiful have you you've lived here for how long a while uh since 2000 do you have an assessment from no. your road or was it done before you it got was here? done before we got here lucky you yeah that that was the people actually from what i understand from older neighbors who've been around in this yep. neighborhood a long time they said they pushed for it early yep. so then it was smart. affordable smart so it's been a sticking point for me for a long time. I Not very many, and you can check my math on it, but not very many cities do it the way we do it anymore. There are more creative ways to do this. Great, just saying. We, what, so just so everybody understands, but what happens here, I think everybody knows this because everybody hates it. But when your street gets redone, they, yep. they measure how big your thing is, and they send you a big bill. Yes, they do. My point is, and what hurts me most is because I mentioned earlier, I love this neighborhood. There are people who buy their first homes in this neighborhood mm -hmm. and then get an assessment and wind yep. up underwater on their home because they got an assessment. That's This is the only reason you need not to do what we do. There's lots more reasons, but... All of a sudden, you get a 10 grand right. bill. This should be enough. So then what you do is you put on your tax bill for the next whatever they allow it for, 17 Decade. years, whatever it is. Right. And if you sell your house in the meantime, that gets passed on to the next buyer or you pay it off at the time and you lose money on the deal on the end. It sucks. Mm -hmm. It's just a bad way to do it. Yep. It's not creative. Yep. It doesn't help anybody. Yep. It doesn't help us grow as a city. Nope. Certainly doesn't help people want to move here because Nina doesn't do it that way. And it Appleton also, doesn't do it that way. I mean, Appleton, no. It's Final Life doesn't do it that way. It's rolled in. Correct. So I am I think it was six or seven years ago, there was a big debate. There was a program that was put forth by council at the time a big service group in the city hated it. Is that a way to put that without pointing fingers to somebody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they made a big stink about it and it got pulled from it. So they, they pulled the whole thing. So we, we're still stuck with the same method, even though we, we tried seven years ago. Yep. I remember I was, when that happened. I was on the committee to do so then to try and fix it. And we recommended something to council and council didn't like it. So to me, it's just a subject that I care a lot about. And I think we do it poorly, and there are going to be changes to it, which is good. So that's why it's important to talk about it in public right this second. Okay. So where do you want to start? What do you want to know? By I'll give you what's being proposed currently by council. Let's so do it. Can, yeah, because be I don't know. Okay. I don't know. And you're gonna have opinions on it, right? Real time. Yeah. You know, hey, this is gonna be fun. Gonna, I we, do. I do a, own a. I own a crib. We need a. We need a camera for your reactions to this. So <laughs> it's expensive, as people can guess, to replace this program and make nobody have to pay for it, but. The city is currently proposing a way to fund half of what's needed to make half of assessments go away, which is certainly better than nothing. And don't take any of this as me saying this is the wrong direction because it's better than what we have now. What's being proposed is a vehicle registration fee of $35 a year, and the rest of the dollars needed would be on your utility bill. Wheel tax. Wheel tax. It's a wheel tax. I know what it is. But okay, like so we... VRF. And other places have wheel taxes. They do. I do believe Appleton has a wheel Appleton's tax. Appleton's is $20. Oshkosh will be $35. Mm. That's a lot mm. in comparison. Mm -hmm. I personally don't like wheel taxes and never have. And again, this is better than nothing. And if this is what we get, I won't fight about it afterwards. If they get this done before anybody gets elected, I, it would be me or otherwise. I won't fight with anybody about it because it's still better than what we're doing currently. Now, how is that wheel tax being done? Is that per vehicle? Per or? vehicle. Mm. So... Correct. So typically one of the most regressive forms of tax we have and that anybody can apply because it hurts the people with the least amount of money the most. The way I keep explaining it to folks is that the people who lose the most on a VRF or wheel tax are the people who don't have to, people who don't want to have two cars, they need to have two cars because they need a second job or a third car because they need a, a kid who works and they need the third job. So traditionally, that type of funding is looked at as very aggressive because it hurts the people the most who need the most support, not the least. Okay, there's all sorts of things that I'm thinking. So I'm thinking about, okay, if you do a will tax, and let's say it's benefiting those who are property owners, right? Yep. But you're taxing those who, you could be taxing a lot of people who aren't property owners and are property renters, but nonetheless, you are throwing into the assessment of the street, which they drive on the street, so I can understand some of it. But whew, 
I don't know. I don't know how I feel it's about tough. it. It's tough. I got to think about it more. I, and I'm going to give you lots of time to think about it. And this is not going to be something we're going to settle today. Mm-hmm. It is a very difficult subject. I sincerely hope Oshkosh figures it out and gets a solution done because the sooner we do it, the better. Yeah. The problem always with this discussion is it is the least equitable playing field you can get to because everybody drives somewhere. Right. And everybody drives places for different reasons. So it's yes. hard to pinpoint which thing should fund it, right? Right. It's always been what's difficult about it. Right. So for point and counterpoint, I will tell you what the committee I chaired recommended a council that was rejected out of hand at the time that I still think is a great idea. I don't think it'll ever come back because it is, you see me smirking to a degree because it, it's that idealistic thing, right? It's the least equitable quote unquote solution to the least equitable problem. You with me so far? Mm-hmm. So what we proposed was every parcel in the city that's a residence pays $5 per month. Every parcel in the city that's industrial or commercial or anything non-residential pays $15 a month. See how that's unfair? It's inherently unfair because big buildings pay the same as small buildings. Big houses pay the same. But we're collectively working towards not bankrupting our neighbors was my right. point. That number, when you add that up by parcel, comes out to $8 million a year, which funds the entire replacement of everything. So currently, if your road gets replaced, if this goes through, you're going to not pay for the road and the sidewalk part, but you're okay. going to pay for the utilities part. Well, I was so you're doing, going to pay half of it. Wait, I was doing the math. Yep. So the math I'm, I'm coming up with real quick is for if you've got a parcel, a home, that's 60 bucks a year. Correct. And this is where this is where you should be going. Keep going, right? And so then, if if, if you're not at the sixty bucks, if you own a bigger one, you're at one eighty a year. Yep, sounds good to me. Agreed. Don't and have a problem with it. Well, sure. And then think if you were assessed, how many years it would take you to pay that off at sixty dollars per year? It's cheap. It, well, I'm just it, my thought process is I'd rather pay the sixty bucks a year than pay the ten thousand dollars or that three thousand, uh, whatever it right. is, uh, over the uh, the course of a decade. Agreed. But it, it doesn't matter. I'm not bitter about it, not getting any consideration. But well, it maybe it, that we bring it up now. We need to go ahead and re re. re well, it. sure. The interesting part of that is what they're proposing with the utility portion of what I just explained to you is about two ninety one per month per household that has utilities or business or whatever. So it's a similar concept. We're getting closer. Nina did almost the exact same thing. Nina assessed by now they're calling it by block, not by parcel anymore. So they've refined it a little bit since then. But that was my I thought unique solution to it at the time. That's still not the best way to solve this. And then I'll wait for your opinion. This is where you can, you, can, you can act on this next part. And I can act on this next part. And if elected, I'll do whatever I can to make sure the city officials act on this next part and my other councilors act on this next part. You will have a unique perspective on this because you work in a different county than Winnebago County, correct? Correct. I think you know, but you might not know, that Winnebago County is currently one of three counties in the state of Wisconsin that does not have a 0.05% sales tax. Did you know that? No. One of three counties in the state that does not have a 0.05 sales tax. Why that is, nobody, I mean, there's lots of reasons. We've never needed it, quote unquote. Traditionally, those things are used and implemented by counties to build an arena or to save an employer or to do something big for their county where it's needed, right? Mm -hmm. We just haven't had the use, which is great. The county has a pretty big surplus as it is all the time. We're not even going to talk about the Spirit Fund and how much money hasn't been spent in the Spirit Fund yet. Just the fact that we do not have a 0.05% sales tax. So this is always my number one solution. We can't decide, you and I, and city council can't decide. What are they called? Supervisors. County supervisors. County would supervisors, have to, yeah. yeah. You'd have to, they'd have to make that emotion. They'd have to get it on a ballot. We'd have to vote for it. Oh, yeah. So, Matt, I know. What, it they, would never. But here's why it should, and here's why you and I can ask that question, and here's why city council should work to influence that, and your city manager should work to influence that. Because if we did that, I know what Outagamie County gets from theirs. I know that Oshkosh would probably be a little bit higher because we've got a visitor rate thing. And to your first point about not equity, about, but about everybody using the roads, that is a way to pay for these types of things because everybody paying the sales tax is using the roads. That doesn't exempt the town of Algoma that's not in the city of Oshkosh that right. uses our parks and our roads. Right. Everybody's paying it because everybody's shopping here. The only answer as to why you wouldn't do that is if you believe people are choosing to not buy a car at Bergstrom and Appleton, but coming to Oshkosh to buy a a car at Bergstrom and Oshkosh to save that half a percent sales tax, which they are not doing. There's no competitive advantage just not having that tax. Here's the numbers, as I understand it. I can't be quoted on it because you can't get these from anybody, but as I understand it, it would generate about $31 million per year, 0.05% sales tax in in Winnebago County. EAA alone, we, and we do know this part because we know the economic impact of EAA. 
EAA week alone generates one million dollars at point zero five percent. And guess where those people live? Not, Not here. here. But guess whose roads they're using that are impacted by this that they're charging our citizens for? Here. Yours, yes. So if supervised, not supervised, he's County Executive Damel. If County Executive Damel, I, he's a friend, so we love to, I, he knows I call him out on this all the time. If he were to do that, the county could say, we need to keep half of those funds for us, for county roads, because there are a lot of county roads, and the county has to fix them. That's always the excuse, right? Somebody's got to pay for them. Yeah. They could keep half. That leaves $16 million rough, roughly remaining. What they should do, because those funds are supposed to be used to lower the general levy and benefit the people who live there when you've got a sales tax like that. And that might mean if you built an arena that brings in more money for you, that benefit lowering the levy is a broad term, right? John could then take that remaining $16 million divided up by the towns and cities in Winnebago County by population and let them have it. That would eliminate your street assessments here in perpetuity for good. And wouldn't cost you a penny, mm. literally a penny. Now, how do we get there is the question. That's a tough one. I know. Because the minute you say raise taxes, sure, no matter how minuscule, mm -hmm. people act like it is the end of the planet. Agreed. And this is why I think it's a, an interesting point in time to have a point and counterpoint. Because which tax is more regressive, a wheel tax or a 0.05% sales tax? And regressive is the important part of that, right? Right. So which one? Which, which is worse? I don't expect you to answer. And you oh, may no, not, I and wouldn't you may not, answer. You may not be able to answer, but no. one is worse than the other. One hurts people more than the other. One is more regressive than the other. It just is. I know. See, all the air is out of this room now. All, no, it's gone. No, you know what, though? We needed to say this stuff out loud. That is kind of the point, right? So yeah, you got to say this stuff out loud, and you got to throw... People don't know what they don't know. True. And... There's a whole segment of our population that's just busy surviving. Yeah. That these things affect. Big time. But sometimes when we can put a, put this kind of conversation in the right space, it gets to those ears too. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, we can't keep saying, and you and I both sort of said it, it but it's the first response. As soon as we say county supervisor, everybody goes, oh, no, 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 couldn't, but they won't. Why not? I mean, that, and that, I'm not trying to be the guy who keeps saying, why not? But how many times, I mean, how many days can that be ex the excuse? Yeah. It, it just, it, someday it has to stop. Facts. Or, or give me the reason that we don't have it. I mean, again. Or just come up with something, you know, find find that middle ground. There's oh, a middle yeah. ground somewhere. In that? It, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I, I really do. I just always think like, you know, there's there's opportunity. There's always opportunity. True. And it's got to start with the conversation, though. Yeah, it it's at least got to be able to have a conversation about it. And to circle all the way back, then I've, I've got to be the guy who's okay with it not being all the way there, right? Right. Someday. That's hard. That's hard. All right. All right. That's so, a lot of it. That was a lot of words. That was amazing. I mean, it was just, amazing. It was a lot of words. <laughs> yeah, but without those lots of words, nothing gets done. <clears throat> True. Okay. Well, it's that time. We're going to start wrapping up. Chris, uh, Kosh listeners, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for giving us your minds and ears. Thank you for valuing this conversation, being interested enough in our community and another impactful community member who's trying to do great things and make changes and help make our space better for all of us. Um, once again, we are a work in progress. Um, so if you've got any recommendations on how to make the Kosh a better podcast, please, we are open to it. If you would like to be a guest, let us know. If you'd like to recommend a guest, let us know. Uh, you just reach out to us at askthekosh at gmail.com. Once again, that is askthekosh at gmail.com. I personally answer those emails, so you will get a response. Also, as you know, I got my ask for you kosh listeners and that is two things while you're listening to the kosh right now take a moment hit the subscribe button um become a frequent regular kosh listener also take a moment and fill out a review on the kosh good bad or indifferent however you feel about it fill it out what you're doing is you're helping our analytics and with better analytics does is it gets the kosh in front of more eyes and ears and we think we have something very, very special here for our community. 
uh, learning about us, learning about our neighbors, learning about these topics that matter to all of us. So please, please, please take a moment and do that. I also just want to take a quick moment and mention the Kasha's sponsor, Sturgeon Spirits Craft distillery you know today is that day i'm not gonna lie me and the wife we're gonna right after we get done with here we're gonna go make a field trip and spend some time with sturgeon spirits just so you know what day it is kosh listeners this is the day that we've got choices and my choice is how much of the herd game am i gonna go to and then i've got to watch the packer game now i have not decided on which one i'm gonna do but we have decided that i think we're gonna do both i think i'm gonna get a quarter to a half end of the herd game and then i gotta see how the packers end up at the end of the day but we're gonna do that now now that i threw in threw in a shout out to our sponsor let me just throw this out here it is it is shout out time chris who you got for shout outs well, it was going to be a Sturgeon Spirits, but then we forgot about them, and then we got them back, and then you mentioned them again. It's still Sturgeon Spirits. It's Sturgeon Spirits. Facts. Let's go. Yes. Is that the only shout out? That's Come all I got. Now. That's all you got? It's, yeah. Come on now. You got an awesome team. You got all of the oh, things. Oh, that kind of shout out? I don't, it's that I don't kind of shout out. Kind of thing. Yeah. It's, the, it's a personal sh- You shout out whoever you But I really like Sturgeon shout-out. Spirits. Well, yeah, we got them though. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, it, I didn't think about it that way. I thought it was a local business kind of shout out thing. And I really was, t- I was talking about Sturgeon Oh, you, I mean, you hit my other one. You know, I'm a herd fan. I see you there all the time. Facts. So it, it, I will be both places tonight also for that matter. So yeah, all right. we'll go with that. I'm going to keep it easy. Okay. Uh, my quick shout outs. I want to send a shout out to my man, Sean Fay, Chris Tarman, Daphne Lewis, just for being great friends. Also, I want to send a shout out to anyone at UWO that yesterday was their last day. We've had tough times over there. And um, I just want to know, you know, I was, I was, I am a part of the Titan family and I just want all those Titans to know that, um, you know, we got you, we, we hear you, we think about you and we're going to try to help where we can help. Uh, I want to send a shout out to Debbie Gray Patton who got a new position. So she is she is uh, staying on campus. Debbie is an amazing person who, who serves our students here at UW Oshkosh. And then I want to send condolences to my friend who runs uh, Fox Valley Con- Comedy. Um, someone very important in their family past, and just want you to know, hey, I'm thinking about you. And lastly. Go pack go. That's Let's where go. we're at. Let's go, go pack go. Yeah, I'm serious about this. You know my you know what my what in the world and was gonna originally be was what in the world's going on with all these haters that hated on Jordan Love, but now they're Seriously. on the bandwagon. Seriously. Right? But you know how quiet it is? There's crickets out there right now, but it would didn't used to be crickets. Nope. And we discussed earlier, I don't I mean I like football. I don't love football, but I like football. I, we have right. a fantasy football league at the restaurant. I right. have for a long time. Oh, okay. Guess how many people in my fantasy football league laughed when I drafted Jordan Love in like the seventh round? Everybody. Oh. Guess whose team he's on? Mine. And guess how many years I get to keep him for? Six more. Oh, let's go. It's like that. It's like that. Oh, I love it. Okay. I, like I said, I'm bad at fantasy football, but if I get any cred, guess where else they laughed at me? They laughed at me 10 years ago, 11 years ago, yeah. when I drafted a guy named Patrick Mahomes in the 12th <laughs> round. Everyone, ha 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 ha. And I went, okay, fine, whatever. I'm bad at this. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh. Bruh. Okay. Well, Chris, we got one more thing to do. Oh, go. All right. The last thing to do is you've got three choices. And this is the closing. Um, you can share with our Kosh listeners some parting words of wisdom. Option B, you can tell us what would yourself today tell your 13-year-old self? Or option C. You can do both because we always got to have an all the above option. I like it. I'm going to go with A and it's going to be a story. I'm going to keep it as short as I can because we talked. I I sound like a grump sometimes. I know I sound like a grump sometimes and I don't mean to. So I wanted to give you a positive Oshkosh story about some amenities we talked about, about people wanting to come here and be here and give you a hidden gem that's not even quite open yet, but we're going to get there. So a handful of years ago, this is a story, but I'll make it short as I can. Friend of mine from college was passing through. He's a jazz musician by trade. He played with the jazz orgy. He stopped in, said hi, said, I said, next time you're here, stop in, come play. When you're on tour, they're touring folks. They do a thing. He did that. He came back again, met some people at the restaurant, fell in love with the city. He and his wife decided to relocate here because their family's nearby here. They just fell in love with Oshkosh, right? And they moved here from Portland, which is great. That's what we want. Cool yeah. jazz musicians to come here. 
This was right about COVID time. You you know about the Doe House. It's really cool. B&B downtown, right? Beautiful, mm. beautiful building, a beautiful little Victorian house they renovated into an Airbnb. Oh, yeah. COVID hit, and they couldn't have any guests, so they put out a call for artists to a degree. And my friends from Portland, who were living in Oshkosh now because they loved it here, reached out to some other friends in Portland who were authors. And they said, hey, this cool new Airbnb's got a thing for artists in residency. You could come write a book here. And they said, we'll apply. And guess who they got, they got in? So they got to come here and write a book. Those two people came here, fell in love with Oshkosh, bought a house on Washington Avenue, moved here from Portland, which is great so far, right? Mm-hmm. Super excited. I think I know who you're talking about. You might. Yeah. We'll find they're, out. In they're a in the big stone. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So they liked it here so much that they've now purchased a building on Main Street and they're renovating this building on Main Street mm. because the jazz musicians want to settle down and make this their home for good and want to run a retail store there. So they're building a, a recording studio and a retail store that opens next month in this spot. All because those nice people showed up here one time and people were nice to them and they loved what we had to offer, which is great. So you're getting new neighbors, new homeowners, new artistic people. And now a new business on your main street, which is great. It's going to be called Can Can. It's really cool. I have nothing to do with it other than my friends, but you can find them on Facebook, and it's going to be a jam. Mm. So it's not a, we're doing some things right, Tim. But we're doing some things right. Oh no, I think we're yeah. doing a ton of things right. I celebrate the cash all the time, well, I know but that does not mean that. right. <laughs> it does not mean that I can't say the things that I got to say though. Doing the best. Facts. Yeah. Good. All right. Well. Chris, this was a good time. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for being on the cash. Till the next time. The cash.